What is going on, gang? Welcome to another episode of the Pop Rica Podcast. It's me, your boy C, the faithful, trusty steward of this fine slice of fine that we call Pop Rica. I have with me three guests. This is the first time I've had three guests on one show since episode 15. This is uh, episode 150 something, by the way. Uh, the podcast. <laughs> so unwieldy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we're going to be doing the Pop Rica sci fi movie draft. If you listen to the season nine show, we did the comic book movie draft. That was a big success. So we're doing it again with sci fi movies this time. So, who are our contestants today besides me? We have to my left, we have Brian Martin. We have Brian Martin, your first time on Pop Riga. It is, yeah. Yes, I appreciate it. Yeah, that's exciting. Coming. Yes. Uh, a mere 15 minutes since we last recorded. <laughs> this is one This is one I can actually get my mother to listen to. Oh, all right, there we She's go. like, I can't afford $7 a month. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully your mother loves profanity. <laughs> and who do I have across the table from me? I am Pete Lentz. Pete Lentz, also your first time on Pop Riga. Yes, it is. So weren't, you in, uh, is. weren't you in Fallout Boy? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, I decided it didn't pay very well, yeah. so now I do podcasts because there's a way through. Okay, Joe Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> and to my right, who do we have? Mm-hmm. If you haven't recognized that laugh by now, it's um, Jermon Jackson. It is Jermon Jackson, leader um, of the Jermon Tarage. Yeah, I was. Um, I was gonna kind of killed the joke there. I was gonna say yeah, I haven't haven't seen you in a while. <laughs> <laughs> it's been since I stepped out of the room and stepped back in. Yes, I've seen a whole sushi and pie later. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's because that's a part of a complete dinner. Right? Yes. Three course meal <laughs> was had over there. Breakfast of champions. <laughs> he had an appetizer and a dessert. No, that's it's it. Got, no, got, no entree. It's got riboflavin. <laughs> <laughs> Is that still good? I, I Rival so. wave is still good. I don't know, I don't know what they're saying thing. these days. Uh, uh, so this is going to be a little bit different than how we do our normal pop rigger shows. Normally we have three different segments. We talk about current <sighs> shit and we harp on one particular thing, and then we end it off with brackets. We'll still have brackets at the end, uh, but both segments will be dedicated towards the draft. Uh, so this is how this business is going to work. Uh, we're going to get our draft order set, and we're just going to go one by one, and we're going to draft instead of, like, fantasy football, instead of drafting players, we'll be drafting sci-fi movies to create a quote-unquote team of ten. And we will let you guys, the uh, the people of the good Paprika Facebook group, vote on who created the best team. Uh, before we get started, uh, are there any questions? Um, what are the rules? What- uh, the rules as far as um, what goes for a sci-fi movie. So I know comic book movies are off the table. Comic book movies are off the table. What about animated? If you want, I have two, three. Four? Yeah, I have a couple on mine yeah. as okay. well. Yeah, I was. I wasn't yeah. sure. I would. I was going to find out that find that out when we got here too. All right, then we might do a little bit of musical chairs because I want to be able to keep the flowing of this smooth. But I will go ahead and pick my draft number, and I'll keep this bad boy on rolling. And. It looks like I am picking second. Oh, what else do we have here, Jermon? I got three. Jermon no has. way. Pete with the number I am oh! number one, baby. Oh! <laughs> well, okay. First time's a charm. Sorry about your luck. <laughs> right. That's okay. That sucks. That's okay. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> All right, then. That's so. my murderer's row. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm just, I'm, I'm just happy I'm going first. <laughs> All right, so we're going to do a little bit of musical chairs here, guys. Uh, what am I, number two? So yeah. if I can get, let's see which way. Which way. All right, if I can get Pete here. Oh, we're going to switch. Okay. Yeah, 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 that yeah, way we yeah. can go in a circle. Dig yeah. it. No, I like it. Yeah, and that should be good. Give me my coaster. And while they are getting their <laughs> business set up, of course, we have our beer here we got to talk about. I have the Elysian Space Dust uh, IPA, 8.2% alcohol by volumes. Uh, the hopping is pure star glow energy, which chnook to bitter and light dry additions of Citra and Amarillo. Ale, this shit is delicious. That was a wonderful explanation, man. Uh, I breezed that pretty damn quick. I didn't you read that the, right off the label, didn't you? <laughs> didn't give it the love I normally get. What are you drink, <laughs> drinking on here, sir? Man, I'm drinking uh, Coco Loco Porter mm. by No Doubt Brewing Company right here in Charlotte. Uh, this label is long, so um, <laughs> it's it's a chocolate beer and it rules. That's all you need. It says know. brewed with cocoa nibs and coconut. Ooh, nibs. I don't know what a cocoa nib is, but it sounds awesome. Isn't that what like when when you get your arm cut off, there's like a nib left? <laughs> Sure, why not? <laughs> yes, that, 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 why not? Do you know <laughs> how many how many hula dancing 
<laughs> Hula dancing ukulele players had to give their nibs. Oh, oh, nibs. nibs. Coco nibs. Nibs. Her nibs. Coco Loco. Is that what Porter. happens when black people lose limbs? Or yes. Is it's 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 6.2 <laughs> yeah, Coco, yeah, Coco nib. Coco <laughs> nib. <laughs> hey, what up, Coco nib? <laughs> Stop calling me that. <laughs> that I is, left that life a long time ago. That is, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Wow. All right. All right. This is off to a great start. This is <laughs> now, before we get started, before we start drafting these Jones, uh, does anybody I'll, – I'll, I'll give a quick, a quick little uh, tidbit about the list of movies that I came up with. Interesting tidbits. I have four Spielberg films on my list, five Harrison Ford films, eight films on this list I've never even fucking seen. <laughs> so we're gonna see. <laughs> Are you just hoping to roll the pop culture dice? Is exactly. that what you're doing? Oh, I'm not. Man. I'm not drafting. Just my on name movies. recognition. I'm drafting to win. Drafting what you think people drafting will. To win. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's one movie that is definitely not making my cut specifically because I'm like, yeah, it won't win. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I won the uh, comic book movie joint, so I'm trying to retain my title here. The sci-fi movie. <laughs> All right, uh, Pete. The First one is yours. So, what are you going with first? Oh, The Empire Strikes Back. Oh, oh God damn! I knew it. I no, knew that was like that <laughs> was that has that's... been that has been the first one on my list for like a month since we've been talking about this. I'm like, oh, sci-fi movie draft. Ooh-hoo. That's number seven down on my list. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was you a... have six movies you like better than Empire Strikes Back. What's not, the matter that with was, you? Not, not necessarily that I like more. That I think are more. Uh, that have a better reach and better chance of votes. Although, that, yeah, it's, it's, it's fucking That was cool. Was I'm not judging you for being wrong. <laughs> yeah. it's totally that, cool. That man. was in my list of alternates. Just because, <laughs> yep. well, I figured first round somebody was snatching that up immediately. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. so I was like, if it's there, eh. <laughs> now, see, now it's, it, I'm hoping that I don't have one of those situations where, like, I drafted the total badass player and then everybody else sits on the bench because they suck ass. <laughs> so that's what I'm hoping is that, you know, I can ride this wave. But Empire Strikes Back... Absolutely my number one. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. What's your favorite oh, yeah. part of that movie? What's my favorite part of that movie? Yeah. Oh, damn. Um, I, I'll be honest with you. My my favorite part of that movie is the lightsaber fight between Luke and Vader. There's, there's so much genuine passion. Before, like, Luke knows – before we, re- we really, as the audience, especially, you know, if you – if you watch him in the hatchet order, like I like to... The machete you know, order. Machete yeah. order, yeah. yeah. That's, the hatchet order, machete. Yeah. The big knife order. That's the one I like. The, <laughs> uh, if you're not familiar, four, five, one, two, three, or omitting one if you're yep. a hater that's my like drink me. my coaster. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> four, five, two, three, six. Yeah. And that's... That, I'm, I'm okay with... Because it... You know, like they say on the... Uh, you know, the description of the hatchet order, it preserves all of the secrets. Yeah. The, yeah, yeah, the yeah. prequels become a second act... Backstory, which is great. Flashback. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. I, I think we need like a that. new hatchet order, though. One like, like we're stop. We stop halfway one? through. We stop wa- halfway through you Empire. Start with Rogue One. Yeah. Really. We yeah. stop halfway through Empire, and that's when we put Force Awakens in because that's when they got freak nasty on, on the Millennium Falcon. <laughs> <laughs> we got to watch the moment where Kylo Ren was conceived. <laughs> Or just just flash Adam Driver's image for just a second when he kisses oh, her. Oh yeah, and, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right before I've isolated the reverse power flux yeah, coupling. Say, yeah. Like my right hands are dirty that. too. What are you afraid of? Cut the Kylo yeah. Ren. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Look how old you become. <laughs> yeah, but that's my favorite part that's is good. the good the uh, the lightsaber fight because there's so much. There, you know, he's Luke Skywalker's not the impassioned Jedi. The you know the 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 brooding guy that we see in, you know, in Return of the Jedi. He's still this kid that wants to, he wants to take out Vader because to him, Vader is just, he represents everything as evil. He doesn't know he's his dad. He doesn't, you know, doesn't know the backstory or the lineage of his family or anything like that. He just knows Vader bad. Mm, Go and get him. You know, and, and so he's, he's really rolling the hero die. And then when he sucks at fighting and loses (laughs) his hand and gets handed like a bitch. Yep. It's like, oh, okay, this is a this is a much larger narrative now. It's just yeah. in that moment, the the Star Wars narrative becomes bigger to me, and that's that's it's that's like for me is the crux of the series, really. And I just love it. Dopeness, dopeness. Mm-hmm. All right, then. Uh-uh. Next pick goes to me as the number two seat here. Uh, I I don't even agree that this is a, a science fiction movie, but everyone else <laughs> seems to think so. So fuck it, I'm gonna put it number one on my list: Mad Max Fury Road. Oh. oh. Yeah, I. You're welcome. You know, 
I contended when I was make, when I was creating my list. I contended that the Mad Max series is not science fiction. I don't think it is. I don't think it I is. don't. I don't think it, it's a fantastic film. Yeah. It's a it's a great series, and uh, you know I love post apocalyptica, but there's genuinely no real tech to speak of in the movie. I think people are like it's dystopian future, so it must be sci fi. And I'm like, mm-hmm. if I do a rom com and set it in dystopia, it's still gonna be a rom com. Yep. The, <laughs> the book of Eli is not. Science fiction, either dystopia, yeah, yeah. not yeah. no tech in that, you know. I, like, I, I can dig that. Uh, what huh. was your thoughts on Fury Road there, Brian? Uh, it, I was on my list. All right, that sounds good. So, <laughs> I, I, I was I, same thing, like, I mean, it, it, it. I mean, arguably, you could say that Star Wars isn't science fiction, but you know, if you really wanted to get down to brass tacks, yeah. but you know, for the sake of this, I definitely consider Mad Max Fury Road to be a, a science fiction movie. If only because the technology used to make the movie was pretty rare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there is no guitar way. was definitely. There was no yeah the Doof Warrior. I'm <laughs> oh, like man. like I, I've I've just made it publicly known that in the post apocalyptic world, that's the job I want. I'm just How? Doof Warrior all the way. <laughs> that's when you know, Doof as a Warrior. villain, you've reached maximum decadence. When you literally have a dude that all he does is play a flaming guitar on top of a car. <laughs> it's <laughs> great. That, that is so great. Why that's do you think inspiring. I do this show, Sarah? That's, I have goals. I have dreams. It's like White Snake had no idea back in the day. It's like, yeah, we'll get her to writhe on the car. Oh, you've got a dude on a flaming car? <laughs> I don't know. I think I'd still probably take Tony Kittane, though. No. Uh, <laughs> I would. I'd, yeah. <laughs> All right, then. Uh, number three goes to you. Yes, Jamal? yes. Um, I'm gonna come out with it here and just swing for the fences here. I'm going to say um, the Matrix. Oh, ah. okay, taking it early on. In yes, the game. there is a reason I could not pick the Matrix, and I, I have it way down on my list. So when I put these lists up that people can vote on, they'll be anonymous. They're not gonna know whose list is whose. Everyone knows how much I love The Matrix. So I know that if I put The Matrix anywhere on my list, people are going to know it's me and know them hating ass haters in Pop Rig. <laughs> they will really vote against me because people in Pop Rig are oh, dicks. That's, that's, <laughs> you are playing to win. <laughs> so yeah, I'm playing, playing. I had yeah. to sacrifice my favorite movie of all time <laughs> in order to win this thing. Why is Matrix number one on the your Matrix list? The Matrix is, is the game changer. Yep. It's, it really is the game. And. I would argue that the, without the Matrix, we wouldn't even have the superhero boom, because like the, not only you know is it great a great sci-fi concept that you know spawned games and all kinds of other mm-hmm. media, um, it pushed um, the boundaries of technology and what they could do with special effects. Right, right, and, right, right. Like you couldn't do half the stuff you would think you could do in a superhero movie without the Matrix, basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is, uh, and it hits on so many levels, yeah. like philosophically, yeah, it's in there, like, religiously. This the the way it was directed, the way it was edited, the the colors they choose to use, like when yeah. they're in the real world, everything is what got the uh, the bluish hue, and then in the Matrix, everything's got the greenish hue. And yeah, yeah, action Brilliant. is on point, and it's Brilliant. one of my favorite fight scenes is uh, Smith versus uh, Neo down there that the, that train or whatever that that subway. Something yeah. great about that movie too was the advertising campaign that didn't tell you jack shit about it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. 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 Like yeah. you don't get that anymore. I fully blame the Matrix for why no one gave a fuck about Equilibrium when it came. Out. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, very overlooked movie. Uh, all right then, uh, there, Mr. Martin. Uh, your first choice is yours. My number one pick is Star Wars: A New Hope. Oh, okay. Yep. New Hope well, from a Star Wars fan. Which I think I was going to pick over Empire Strikes Back anyway. Uh, just because for like cultural it's, it's sci-fi. Like, no, it's, it's because it's the little Richard of like modern sci-fi movies. The originator, the emancipator. They never gave me nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I am done with this show already. <laughs> but I mean, it's, it's just, as far as like sci-fi serial movies go it's just it gives you everything you want and stuff you didn't know you want and if you never saw another star wars movie after that you would leave happy and it's just it's it's really hard to beat for me all right then all right then that is oh, I, and i go with the original version that doesn't have that weird ass java scene in it that kind of upsets the whole pace of the movie it yeah really but does. to be fair it they really fixed does. that in the blu-ray release so at like oh did they yeah well what they did was it's still the- there <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he looks—he looks better. By he that rationale, look like an then no, it is not fixed. However, 
what they did do, <laughs> what they did do is on the on the uh, the Blu-ray release when they came out with the with all six of them in the same set, they actually went back in and and redid a lot of the uh, visual effects. Oh and yeah, that was one of them. They've touched him he up now looks every more single like release. He does yeah. in Jedi yeah. than like a weird eyeless slug wonder that he looked like in the right. special edition so and they touched up the where he steps on his tail and yeah the, oh and yeah that where looks... the hand goes in front of him you know they really did the, you know they did a lot to make that look better i'm yeah. a star wars apologist it, it so looks it looks much better can't and, hurt my feelings and you bro. know and you know honestly um <laughs> they they also applied the same thing to that freakish yoda puppet from episode one on the blu-ray release. yes they did because yes they did because they now it's it cg the, and it's like mm-hmm. oh thank christ they replaced it with the with <laughs> the that model thing from Attack awful. of the clones yeah yeah Okay, darkness. All right, then. So since we're doing a snake draft, Mr. Martin, uh, the next pick is yours again. Oh, sweet. Okay, well, uh, my next pick is going the sci-fi comedy route uh, with Back to the Future. Oh, Oh, damn it. Oh, you (laughs) son of a bitch. I have Back to the Future further down on my list. That was in my, one of my alternates. Yeah. <laughs> one of your alternates, huh? Yeah. Okay. It's, it's another movie that's like, like Star Wars in terms of being just archetypal of like this sort of, uh, you know, mad scientist, teenage kid on a wacky adventure kind of, yeah. kind of story. Uh, but I, there's a reason it was the highest grossing movie of 85. Like it just appeals to you on like some subconscious carnal level, even if you weren't aware of it, like, God, I would love to have seen what my parents were up to in high school. Right. Would you? Really? I would have gotten beat to shit by my dad. <laughs> if, if I showed up as a 17-year-old and he was 17, I would have been beaten up. My brother and I have long held that we were the kind of kids growing up that dad would have beaten up as a kid. Okay. But um, but yeah. it's, it's fascinating because you hear these stories about your parents and you, you kind of get these glimpses into what their life was like back then. But, uh-huh. I mean, you know the story is so much different. And, and that movie just... Uh, aside from that, the Christopher Lloyd is just absolutely brilliant from beginning to end in it. Yes. Uh, what a what a movie! Just it is one point twenty one gigawatts. Yeah. Yeah. Bob hey, Zemeckis' ooh. best movie. If you go to O'Reilly Auto Parts and type in one two one G in the search, it will bring you to a flux capacitor. Oh, wow. nice! Mm-hmm. Wow. So that's a little nice. little Easter yeah. egg. Yeah, it uh, was. Yeah, it was high concept sci fi that was made way more palatable for the common audience basically it was yeah. it was time travel for dummies basically like i'm one of yeah. the few yeah. who enjoys part two more than i do part one uh just the way that just going into the future which is already yeah dope, yeah is, that was and the, <laughs> how they incorporated the events of the first one into the second one and how those sneaky fucks got around crispin glover not wanting to <laughs> not i'm such a sucker which for that he sort sued of thing. And, and won for that long yeah. Long yeah. as well yeah. i'm such mm-hmm. a sucker for that like let's go back and revise history sort of thing. The Flash did it on one of their recent episodes, too. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I will always love episodes. You mean the Flash does it in every episode? No, this one is like <laughs> one of those ones where he's like back talking to old sketchy Wells. And he's back talking uh, to Wells from season two. Okay. And it's oh, like, wow. it, okay. it was it was rock solid, but it was very Back to the Future 2. <laughs> All right, I get down with that. Uh, Jermont is yours again. Okay, second pick, second pick. Um, oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go... Um, Going to go with um, Aliens. Ooh. Damn it! S. Always Damn good. It! Yes. <laughs> Not even on my list. Oh, oh yes. good. God, it was number it was four on my list, dude. <laughs> it's <laughs> one of those rare <laughs> one of those rare instances with the sequel being better than the original. Absolutely. Um, I, 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 was, I refuse to believe that statement. That, no, that's was, a, he's 100% right. Very, no, I it, disagree, but I still love yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. It's very, it's not off, and it also it's not often <laughs> when you see a film series where the, a movie cha- basically changes genres between mm-hmm. movies. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, it went from yeah. horror to action yeah. Yeah. Just overnight. Like without, uh, to, in my opinion, without a loss in tone. No. Right? And it, no. It, you know, you yeah. saw the evolution of Ripley from being the final girl to a more, much more capable a heroin, and, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. of course, there's get away from her, you bitch. So I mean, that's yeah. <laughs> most one of the most yeah, badass lines. In it's there. an entire machismo action movie told from a matriarchal perspective. It's yes. genius. Yes, it's absolutely yeah. genius. Absolutely. I love that flick. I think, I think if to... Alien, if Alien is my like main bitch, it's like Aliens is my side bitch. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I feel about them. It's like I love you both. But... <laughs> yeah, but she's a side bitch that's getting bought some really nice shit. Right. Yeah. Okay. Like... <laughs> That's that's the main one right there. Baby, put your boots on. We're going to Ruth Chris. (laughs) (laughs) That's that's oh aliens. Damn you! Oh god, that's just uh, that's all right. The knife in the side. It burns. It burns. Oh, it does. It hurts. (laughs) Hurts so bad. (laughs) Uh, I I mean, we get the game over. 
you oh, know, yeah. we got all that. And it's... Fuck are we supposed to do now, man? <laughs> he sharp sticks. The, he, he has the best progression in that entire movie. Yeah. He's, he's just the big swinging dick on all the in his earliest scenes and his complete breakdown somewhere in the middle to where he kind of composes himself towards the end and then he you know he goes out like a badass. And ass. redemption. Yeah. yeah he's he go, redemption. goes yeah. goes uh, 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 full on like frat boy bro oh, to complete psycho bro. like I'm out of my mind to I'm a redeem and save these people as they escape. Yeah, it's, it's mostly Cameron because now I'm trapped and I can't Marines. do anything. Yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> rare when you get a movie like that with such a like a massive ensemble mm-hmm. where like everybody stands out and it's like you literally remember every member of that crew. Vasquez. Yep. Vasquez, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love Vasquez. All I right. even remember Spunkmeyer and he has right. one line. <laughs> right. You know, like he's all right, uh, it is back over to me now, and I'm gonna go ahead and take a more recent joint. I'm taking arrival. Ooh, oh, good pick. Yeah. Ooh, yes, yes, it is. Uh, 2016, Denis Villeneuve, uh, one of my favorite directors. Uh, Amy Adams, I think, is the best working actress today. Uh, uh, fuck I, Streep. I can't. Yeah. I can't argue with that. I can't. Yes, argue. I think Amy Adams is the best. And then uh, even uh, Jimmy Renner holds his own <laughs> in this joint. Even Forrest Whitaker shows <laughs> up to play. It is visually astounding. It is good, thought-provoking sci-fi, which you only get like maybe one or two a year. And I think it is. Absolutely beautiful, that movie. Yeah, it's great. It's a bunch of circles. <laughs> it's like it circles the movie. It's, it's to me, circles. it looks like uh, like like coffee circles, like somebody put somebody their coffee cup them down yeah. and kept picking it back up. Yeah. 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 I, I didn't think that movie was as cool as everybody else did, man. Yeah? It was I, my number one that year. I, like, I, I fell asleep during the first watching, which was – that's my fault. I fall asleep at movies when it's late a lot. I do. But – I, I fell asleep halfway through without the the later resolution of how the aliens were trying to communicate, and they were just at that point was just yeah. like circles. So and, up, so uh, yeah. and when I fell asleep, I remember waking up going, "Why the fuck do people think this movie is so awesome?" <laughs> I'm just sitting here like you don't know. How to <laughs> I'm sitting here like waiting for something to happen, and then I watched the rest of the movie, and I was like, "Oh, okay, well." Something did happen. <laughs> it, it, it wasn't awesome, but it but it happened, and it was you know. I, See, I'm a daysayer. I, I, I know prop Ricans, Like I looked in the in the in the Facebook group, and everybody was like, ah, you know, yeah, Bible's so good. And I'm like, that, ah. that's kind of my problem too. Like I try, you know, I try to do a lot of my movie watching late at night because that's usually when I have free time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah, because who it's on Hulu um, right now, I believe. And I couldn't get like a good 10 minutes in because I just, my attention span just was not there at the time. Yeah, so. that movie It, look, it looked beautiful though. It deserves but, your yeah, time. It's, yeah. it's, like a, yeah. it's like a nice chamomile tea right before bed. Yeah. You know, it's, it's going to put you right out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I completely agree. Oh my God. <laughs> All right, then Pete, we are over to you, sir. Oh, sweet. Thank God. Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. Oh. Bam. See, okay. there, are certain, there were certain franchises where I barely touched because I knew certain stuff was going to get eaten up. Like Star Trek Two is the only Star Trek film on my on my list. Mm. Mm. Okay. okay, well, right. no, so no, I, that's I not another. true. I have I have one other one on here. I have it's, three it's, it's way down. On my five, list. Look, five, you can have five. I have okay. a, <laughs> <laughs> five's not even on my list of movies I would watch again. Okay? Like, no, it's, thank you. It's number one on my list of shit films directed by Adam Shatner. Five's, yeah. got, five's got the distinction of having like when you describe five to someone, it sounds incredible. Like like the plot of five. If you if you sum it up in two sentences, I'm like. Okay, now that sounds way better than what it actually is. Okay, we're not going to watch it. It sounds awesome, but we're not going to watch it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it was number twenty-one on my list. Oh wow! Mm. Yeah. Wow. wow. No, Me. Star Trek Two: The Wrath of Khan was number two on my list. It, it was is, number four on mine. I think I had four. at least I had when coming to Star Trek, I had at least three possible picks for that. For that. Okay. Yeah, Wrath of Let Khan me guess. Was, was on my two, three, and six. Uh, no. We will see. Oh, we will really? See. No. We will see. What, was the motion picture on there? Good it was God, not. It it was good. Not. I was going to say, damn. How about your chamomile tea right there? <laughs> right. Actually, funny. The oh, funny that's thing just was... a good shot of Dramamine and a, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and a nap. Um, yeah. I put Star Trek II as my number two favorite revenge film of all time. Ah. It is a revenge film where the villain, for the most part, succeeds. Mm-hmm. He, he wanted to kill Kirk. He did the next best thing and emotionally crippling Kirk as much as he possibly Absolutely. could by oh, Spock yeah. dying. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Kirk oh, yeah. does, it takes a complete turn for the rest of the series. <laughs> I mean, for me, the the entire, like, 
the whole movie really is good. It's paced really well. It's yeah. it, it's got it's got tension in the right moments. There's even tension in moments that turn out to be okay. Mm-hmm. Like the the you know when they first when they first board the station for the first time and everybody's dead. Oh my god, that's crazy. But then they find out that there's nobody. You know, like Carol and and David, and David escaped. Uh, yeah. And they're like, well, where did they go? And then they beam down, and then David tries to attack him. Who the fuck is that guy? Yeah. Oh, that's your son. Oh, that's his son. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Not cool for Kirk in that moment. But, right, right. <laughs> like, space support. Oh, shit. The space support. <laughs> <laughs> Kirk's got to pay that space support. Hey, let me just beam this to you. Wait, money's not not a thing in the it's 23rd century. We're good. Oh, there was a transporter accident. There was a clone. Forget <laughs> it. <laughs> but the, the, uh, the, the Matara Nebula scene, Ooh. Jesus Christ. That yeah, is it's, just, it's, it's the it's best a, submarine movie I, ever. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. The fact it is that the can, best submarine movie ever. Yeah. I totally the fact agree that with they that. They can create that much tension and that much animosity between two characters who never actually interact. Never the same room. Never yeah. the same room. Yeah. That's the, that. That's a very interesting point. Yeah, they never are on screen at the same time. That and that's not great. even a, that's not even by design. It was a scheduling issue. Oh wow. Yeah, <laughs> they just worked around by doing that. That's but think of like. How many how many people do you know that you despise that you would maybe twenty years from now actively seek out to kill without actually looking them in the eyes again? Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah right. <laughs> I mean that's that's, that's, that's a deep ass. That's right. Ricardo Montalban. Space Seed isn't that deep an episode. <laughs> right. They All right then, Pete, it's on you again. Oh 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 right, it's a yeah. snake draft. Oh that's fantastic. Okay. Um, oh, boy. I have to take this. I have to take this next pick very very carefully because a lot of my you guys, you guys hobbled me with the, <laughs> the New Hope and Aliens, dude. Just, oh, God. But, um, but I'm going to have to go with Terminator 2, Judgment Day. I All was right. thinking, because uh, I knew that was going to get scooped up early, and I didn't even bother putting that on my list. I was like, I was going to, I know some James Cameron stuff's going to get eaten up, but. Yeah, right. right. Number 13 <laughs> on my list. Terminator uh, 2. I think, uh, 26 on my list. Yeah. Terminator 2 is just damn. It's, it's 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 one long chase movie. Yeah, it yeah. is one long chase sequence, and then, yeah. then culminating in what at the time was one of the baddest CG fights ever. Who had at that point at that point who had ever seen the T one thousands metal morph shit like that yeah. was brand new then. <laughs> yeah, mind yeah. blowing, dude. Um, and to think the only way we always used to joke that. Uh, like you know, because the, the uh, spoiler alert: the T one thousand gets melted. Um, <laughs> but. Uh, we always used to joke that what was going to happen to the steel that was in that. Like, did they make some beams and now he tries to put himself together? So here's a bunch of buildings that start shaking itself apart. Oh my god! Yeah. This one corner of the twenty second floor. Here comes an eye beam shooting. Out. Uh, so. Before Mad Max Fury Road came out, I said for years that T two was the second best action film ever made. Die Hard, then Terminator two. Terminator two, so bad. it's so good, man. And then you have the you have the, the Linda Hamilton and the twin sister. Doubling right. up in the yeah. in the mirror mm-hmm. scene, right? And she's and been a total badass between Terminators one and two. It's a complete one eighty for her character. That's James I, Cameron's thing, man. It's like I, just I think in in Terminator women. two, I think I, Terminator two is one of the only films I can I can think of where I don't think there's a bad scene in it, and I don't I don't think there's a scene that is bad or poorly directed or slows the movie down or doesn't give any pertinent information to the plot. There's no fat, um, no fat. I think even when you do when you do the uh, the extended edition that adds like the you know all of the extra scenes, even the the scenes that they cut about the the T one thousand like malfunctioning when he would grab stuff and like oh that's so cool you know yeah, that shit is great. neat and it, he was afraid that audiences weren't gonna get it like yeah. that's one of the reasons he said that he that he cut those scenes was because he didn't think audiences were gonna get it I got it immediately yeah mm-hmm. I was like oh man he's been fucked up so much that now his mimic shit doesn't work yeah and then so later when he looks down at her feet. Which, which is cut from the original film is like that's how he tells them apart because mm-hmm. his feet are becoming the great right yeah like, and, and like even it culminates in that scene it's like oh that's how I know you're the you're the other yeah, one yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> uh, just so camera man he only does I one can't even I've run years, out of good yeah. words to say <laughs> about Terminator Two I've run out of them yeah that, so Terminator Two that's my now, now that I've listened to you I would have put that a higher on my list yeah, yeah. 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 I just think yeah. it's it, it was just yeah. sort of like I just couldn't find a spot for it and I was that's like, one of those yeah. movies that I just watched on when I was a kid I just watched that shit on repeat yeah. Yeah. I was absorbed yeah. every. Every piece Every of cellulite. Ones. I just that, was know. not banking on that being available. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not, even, not even putting it on the list. Yeah. 
<laughs> All right, then. This is back over at me now. I'm going to go ahead and take off Blade Runner 2049. Oh, yeah. Saw that coming. Yep, yep. I knew one of the Blade Runners was going. Yeah, I exactly. Not both of them. I just knew there was something I wanted Runner. to get out of the way before, yeah. before first, Blade Runner happened. I just recently um, watched both of them back to back, and that first one drags. Mm-hmm. Good God. It's way too film noir yeah. to stand up against Villeneuve's oh, it was, fucking yeah, masterpiece. Art. Beautiful. It's just it's art. Beautiful. Beautiful masterpiece. What Villeneuve has got on the original is a lot of world building. Like, yes. like uh, The world of Blade Runner is so much richer. For that second one than mm-hmm. it was the first yes. time around. Uh, mm-hmm. Just the this the evolution of what came in the thirty year gap between uh, these robots or now we're, uh, um, uh, what are they, replicants what are they, replicants yeah. are able to procreate now. And at first I was like, well, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna, you gonna they're gonna fucking start having kids? And I was like, oh wait a minute, that's exactly what the whole point is. All right, then cool. Uh, more human than human. It. Uh, I think Harrison Ford does great with a little bit of screen time that he has. Uh, I think he he actually comes out of his grumpy old man shell and, and acts a little bit. Best bridge movie. ever. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think Ryan Gosling is the shit. Everybody, Robin writes the shit. This yeah. whole movie is. I mean, I even did with creepy Jared Leto. Was you know he's creepy. He cast creepy Jared Leto for a reason. They should have had joys in every store that holiday season. <laughs> <laughs> That was sold. It's sold. That yes. was that was yeah. gone. That yeah. was one of the few times, like recently, where where it looked like Harrison Ford actually wanted to be there. Yeah, he wanted to be there. My yeah. favorite, Unlike, my favorite like, Harrison Ford thing. He, he does that old man run in every single movie now, where he's just like <laughs> his whole arms. body's struggling <laughs> to move. Yeah. I love that. But it's like it's so so like. Doughy, I don't know. Shoulders, <laughs> kind of doughy flail. Yeah. It's it's hypnotic, Zoe. like a lava lamp. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, it is on you, Jermon. Okay, um, let me go ahead. Since I'm actually surprised this hasn't been taken off the board already, so I'm going to go ahead and scoop it up. Uh, Inception. Mm, nice. Oh, good, well, good call, done, sir. Yes. Good call. Well done. Probably, probably neck and neck with The Dark Knight is one of um, Nolan's finest movies. Um, very, of course, very high concept. Um, beautiful, beautiful movie. Good God. It is. Yes. It is. Uh, 2011, I think, is the only Chris Nolan film that has been uh, nominated for a Best Picture. Um, Marion Cotillard should have been nominated for uh, oh, Best Actress. Yes. She's so actress. good in that. I would agree with that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Inception also manages to, uh, I, I, I think, dodge the sci-fi bullet by not having any overt tech in it. Right. Like, it doesn't really... It doesn't really but you don't know what it's, puts them to sleep. They just push fairly, a button and yeah. they go to sleep. Right. It's, it's fairly Perry simple Como in takes. its mm-hmm. concept. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's very, there's not a lot of monitoring or screens or hookups or facilities or machines yeah. that do all that work for them. They just, meh. It just happens. It feels you like know? a real ramshackle operation. <laughs> right. <laughs> they can it just, was, it's, um, it's so ramshackle they can do it in their car. <laughs> right. In a dream. Yeah. yeah. I, I was so invested in that movie and with the van hitting the water that I completely so forgot bad. they were on a plane. In the <laughs> so I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, they were on a flight this whole time, weren't they? I forgot there was a whole other level of this shit. That was kind of kind of Tom Hardy's coming out. <laughs> yeah, I think, you're right. I think it was his yeah. first big coming out. Yeah. Uh, it's the first time that I really paid attention yeah. to him. I yeah. realized I'd seen him in other things before, but uh, for me it was his snow scene. Like Everybody gets their scene. Yeah. That's what yeah. I love. Like yeah. JGL gets you know the hallway, I love oh, the hallway yeah, fight. Yeah. And, and Tom Hardy gets a snow fight. It is Leo's movie, and uh, and Ellen Page does what Ellen I think Page I, does. I think yeah. I, I think I respected um, Leo more as an actor after seeing that, like the stuff he was dealing with in that. You know, he did the back to back with this in Shutter Island, and I yeah. was like, okay, now I'm on the Leo hype yeah. train. Yeah, yeah. All right then, uh, Mr. Martin, it is on you. All right, I'm going to go a little bit, uh, change it up here a little bit. This is going to be the first animated movie, I think. Uh, I'm picking the Iron Giant. Ooh. Oh, very good. Okay. Nice. Very nice. Nice pull. Nice pull. Yep. There are two types of people in this world: uh, those who love the Iron Giant, and those who have not yet seen the Iron Giant. <laughs> right. Exactly. Uh, I'm, I haven't seen it yet. Oh, oh, man. I'm, in, I'm in that camp. Oh wow! Uh, lo- so good. <laughs> yeah. I'm also in that camp. Man. Oh, yeah. I don't know what you're missing, guys. I'm Just me. I've heard. I've heard right nothing but good things though. It's it's <laughs> tremendous. It's it's. It hits every note. It was number like, 38 just, on my list. It's Dude, so good. It's it's what if a gun could choose to not be a gun? Yes. That's okay. fucking it's just at its core is such a genius concept. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, damn. 
<laughs> Y'all Brad, are. <laughs> Brad Bird came off The Simpsons and did this. Yeah, this is his first feature before he did yep. Incredibles, right? Yep. We yes. could do a whole aside about <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's just, just just take a listen. Branch off into the Brad Bird. <laughs> this is the Iron Giant show now. Yeah. Uh, Such a good movie. Guys. All right, then. So is this? Is that the movie? Well, who who asked about animated flicks? Was that you? I did. All it was right, him, and then, then I yeah. seconded. Yeah. All right. Then. So the first animated movie is off the board now. All right. Iron Giant, excellent pull. Hundred percent. Nice. That's what nice. a good pull. Yeah. Um, Y'all don't know, but it's good. <laughs> yeah. It's a really good pull. <laughs> Believe you me. It was on my list. Yeah. For sure. All right. It is back to you now, Brian. Um. Okay. All right. Don't you love these bookends? We get two in a row. I do like that. I do like that. So I cringe every time y'all get to the end. That's middle guys, man. That's middle guys. So so when I think of sci-fi and I think of the movies that had the biggest impact on me growing up, you think Star Trek Five? Before I saw a lot of stuff, I, I think of. Uhura dancing in Star Trek Five, and I'm like, oh, even geez. even now I feel this like this is weird. Is this supposed to be sexy? Yeah. Yeah. Not really. <laughs> you could have gotten Sulu up there, and I'd been like, oh my, okay. yes, oh, watch my dance. <laughs> um, when you think sci-fi, what do you think? I think Jurassic Park. Oh, oh yeah, the very first I, Jurassic Park yeah. movie. Is um, that the first Spielberg? Yeah, 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 that is the first Spielberg off the list. And I just uh, and there's probably better Spielberg options, but yeah. I, Jurassic Park. I saw that movie over and over and over again in the theater. I could not get enough of it. I read the book till it was falling apart, and it was just a revelation to me as like a 13-year-old kid. Number 18 on my list was Jurassic Park. I had that in my top 10. That is the towards the end of the Spielberg magical run that he right. had. Yeah. And then we got into the boring and depressing run. Yeah. <laughs> and then we got like Munich. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Munich's like my favorite Mission Impossible movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's number 30 on my list. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh yeah, it's it has everything that you. Hey, 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 so I'm looking at my list. <laughs> I'm just trying to real quick remember what I did because I haven't been marking them down, and now I'm just dumb. <laughs> uh, you have Empire, Star Trek Two, uh, T Two, Judgment, T Two. Right. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, Jurassic Park one, has two, everything, two. man. It's got. Of course, you pair up the dude who wants nothing to do with kids with the two kids, and he comes out a better person for it. He gets some strong females up in there with Laura Dern, Doctor uh, Ellie Sadler. In there, who has to verbally smack down John Hammond from time to time, and Jeff Goldblum just doing what Jeff Goldblum does, mm-hmm. yeah. being oh, right yeah. the entire movie. Just a- every like, as soon as I was done watching it, like I want to go see it again, and mm-hmm. then I want to go see it again. And it's like there were you know E Entertainment Television had specials on about it, and I was watching all of those, like yeah. the making of stuff, and it was just. I, it was one of the earliest movies I remember being completely and utterly engrossed by for an entire summer. It's the movie that made me realize how impactful scoring was. Because like the credits would be rolling, and I would just be sitting there listening to the music as the credits roll. And I was like, oh, okay. Music is supposed to make me feel a certain way, and this music makes me feel a certain way. <laughs> what are these feelings inside of me? What, what are these funny <laughs> Am <butterflies>? I human? <laughs> More human than human. That's what I'm about. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's... it's Man, and the, to say that a movie from what nineteen ninety three three holds up those effects still hold up today. Still awesome. Yeah. Still awesome. It looks yeah. better than Lost World shit. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that uh, there's nothing bad about Jurassic Park. No, German. Oh yeah. Back to you, sir. There we go. Um, well, and going on that same theme with movies that kind of shaped my childhood. Um, going with this movie um, that. You know, I've watched multiple, multiple times as a kid. Um, it's touched quite a few genres, comedies, of course, sci-fi, the paranormal. Um, I'm going with Ghostbusters. There oh, you go. Not even on my list. Yes. Yeah, it wasn't on mine either, but, <laughs> but, but there's tech. totally qualifies. Yeah, as science it definitely fiction. qualifies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, fucking Good cool. call. Oh, oh, man, tell that's us excellent, it. dude. Well, what? good God. That's like, you've never seen anything like that up to that point. Yeah. That, it's... Um, the first draft was the size of a phone book. They said, "Yeah, Dan Aykroyd wrote a draft." That it was, was originally, um, originally, um, it was basically supposed to be an Eddie Murphy vehicle, more or less. Yeah, because I guess he was supposed to have that Winston role more and ah, everything. I heard uh, Murray was supposed to be Belushi uh, before he died. Mm-hmm. I believe that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and then they brought on uh, Old Bill. 
Yeah. And I'm yeah, sure Aykroyd Murray, probably still had that vision in his head while Murray was playing. Well, you know, the, the funny thing about Aykroyd is that he actually believes everything that happens in that movie is true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, like, every, it, to me, like, every character in that movie shined. Like, of course, yeah. uh, like, Bill Murray is Peter Vinkman and then and, and Aykroyd and, um... Yeah, Harold uh, Harold uh, Ramis. Yeah, Harold Ramis. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, he played so dry. Yes. 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 yes, yes. So Prince is dead. Or whatever. It's like, yeah. Prince is dead. <laughs> <laughs> Jan Hooks as Janine. Is there any Weaver up in no, there? No, that was um, Annie Potts. Yeah, Annie yeah. Potts. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah, Annie Potts. Uh, it is, man, that is, there's nothing wrong with that movie. Not, maybe the, maybe my favorite comedy of all time, actually. Ghostbusters? Yeah. It's like yeah. Someone, yeah. Fight. It's someone asks you if you're a god, yeah. you say yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Where do those stairs go? They go up. <laughs> <laughs> like, that is, that's yeah. what my humor is. I still, off of. uh, at 42 years old, I've seen that movie a million times, and every time I hear they go up, I laugh. Yeah. Yeah. Every yeah. single every time. time. I was always <laughs> partial to, quiet, you smell something? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and of course, uh, William Atherton as the the dickless EPA guy. Oh yeah. yeah. Some people are just made a career out of that. Yeah, made a career yeah. being a dick, a diehard. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> uh, okay, it is on over to me now. Uh, you guys are all keep going back. I'm keep going with these new shits. I'm gonna take Edge of Tomorrow off. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Completely. Yeah. completely <laughs> that was 100 percent on my list, dude. Yeah. It's, Sci-fi Groundhog Day. That is Bad solid. Ass. That's solid. exactly what it is. My yes. exactly my son, dude. I sat down. I sat down and watched. My son's ten years old, mm-hmm. and uh, I sat down and watched that with him. And he immediately wanted to watch it again. He was like, "Daddy, that movie is so good." I'm yes. like, "I know, yes. right?" Yeah, it is. Uh, it's, I mean, it's Tom Cruise doing what he does best. Yeah. Damn near killing himself to entertain. Running. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and running. Run it. Uh, <laughs> it was. It was Tom Cruise. I think. It, be, it was the the most. The most honest I'd seen Tom Cruise, really, because in the beginning of that movie, he was just a piece of shit. Yes. He's a cowardly, spineless piece of shit. And he hadn't That dies over and over. And he eventually (laughs) eventually evolves into that action hero, Tom Cruise. Right. It takes him a minute. Yeah, but you get to actually actually see an uh, an evolution of that. He doesn't come out of the gate being fucking Ethan Hunt. Like, he's like... You know, he sucks and gets handed and smacked a lot. And like, he was like his character in Rain Man, and then eventually, yeah, 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 yeah. Became, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, became yeah, Ethan yeah. Hunt. Yeah, <laughs> I do love that. Um, you know, it's got something for the people who already love Tom Cruise, and it's got something for the people who absolutely despise Tom Cruise. Yeah. 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 Everybody comes out See, of that movie right. feeling yeah. pretty happy. Yeah. It's the Tom Cruise Venn diagram. Yeah. 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 Edge of Tomorrow, Edge of tomorrow right is in the middle. middle. Yeah. Yeah. Emily Blunt, she was killing it, too. Oh, right? yeah. yeah. Giant fucking oh, yeah. Of yeah. Sword there. <laughs> yes. uh, that movie, and visually, great movie. Oh, great yeah. movie. Yeah, good pick. Oh, thank you very much, sir. I appreciate it. Uh, it is to you there, Pete. Oh, sweet. All right. Okay, so I'm going to have to go full Verhoeven here. RoboCop. Damn it. Shit. Oh. Shit. RoboCop. <laughs> hey, you must not have listened to that last episode when I said I live RoboCop, man. <laughs> All right, RoboCop 3 it is. <laughs> <laughs> did you want to win? I'm sorry. Did you? Did you? <laughs> it's number 37 on that was, RoboCop. That was, that was in my top 10. Man, RoboCop that was, was number in 7. in my top 10. Yeah, that number movie, 7 on my list. It was yeah. the next one. That movie manages, I mean, first of all, it's Paul Verhoeven, who, to me, uh, early on was was hitting home runs, yeah. and then Showgirls. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he has had a steady climb out of the hill ever since. Yeah. Yeah. But RoboCop, I feel like, uh, and Starship Troopers touched on this a little bit as well, but the... Uh, the satire of the of the world, yeah, like where yeah. the the yeah. action is interrupted by a stupid commercial from that era. I'll buy that for a dollar. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> or my favorite, and it took me many many years after I had seen it to realize that car is called the Six Thousand Sucks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, they kept calling it. A, and then, of course, you know, much later, I had to look up what a Blaupunkt was. I didn't know what that was either. It's a, it's a stereo. It's not a dildo. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I, had to, I had to look that up. But yeah, yeah but like, there's so many, so many things, so many of those satirical moments punctuated by scenes of heightened violence. Yeah, there's some just over the top. Probably movie. the most squibs I've ever seen in a movie oh, yes. ever. <laughs> yes. Um, you never the, seen the Tarantino movie before. Movie. Well, well yeah. come on, man. Remember no, when Ed 209 yeah, kills they, Mr. Kenny? Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, that buckets that move, that part alone, I think, is worth half the squibs in that film. Yeah. yeah. Um, but there's so, you know, and Peter Weller, like, I don't, I, I don't know what kind of, what they had to do to, 
for him to get him to be on board with that flick, but he took it totally seriously. Like a really believable guy. Uh, yeah. you, and then you you I believe the him as a guy and I believe eye, him as a robot. Gonna, he's yeah. like, sure, I'm the fuck whatever. So yeah, so better, yeah, but I feel like then this. he was he was really doing it for a paycheck. At the point in Robocop, it was like Peter Weller's actually like people know who this guy is right. now. You yeah, know, so, right. Dead or but, alive. But yeah, like uh, it's so just wonderful. The movie's just wonderful. It, it's it's science fiction. It's cop drama. It's 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 full of memorable bad guys, yeah. infinitely quotable one-liners. Red Foreman is the bad guy. For yeah. yeah, Red yeah. Foreman. Yeah. 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 Um, who was it? Uh, uh, the doctor from ER is is the guy who gets toxic wasted. Yes. Yes. Oh, man. That guy. <laughs> and uh, Emil. Emil is his yeah. name. Yeah. Uh, all right, then. It is back on you again, Pete. All right. So With your I'm number five. Put, uh, and... Um, and I'm going to go for the one-two Verhoeven punch. Total, Total Recall! recall. Yeah, huh? go. Okay. Total Damn Recall! I, I love Damn it. Quiz. Hell yes! I, see, I knew when he said when he said RoboCop, I knew that was coming. <laughs> Shit! <laughs> so, so he said RoboCop, and in my head, I was like, okay, so Total Recall is safe for now. <laughs> right. No. Right. I actually, on my list, they are back-to-back. It's number they, 45 on my list. Wow. Yeah. That oh, was no, in my top were, 10. <laughs> you know, top 10? Yes. They, yeah, these two were... The, RoboCop and Total Recall were both in my top 10 as well. Um, just so you know, guys, the remake of Total Recall is still out there if anybody wants to pick that yeah, up. We're not. Um, <laughs> I, no, Colin, Colin, I'm pretty sure everybody here wants to be taken seriously, okay. so we're not going to... Uh, Colin Farrell doesn't even want to pick that. There's <laughs> <laughs> also RoboCop. <laughs> that movie... Joel Kidman the, doesn't want to pick the, that. Yeah. The remake has, I think, five minutes... Five minutes worth of redeemable scene, and it's all the hover car scene. That's it. Yeah, that's it. It's literally it. Nothing else. The hover car chase is badass, but when you, your your rest of your movie is bookended by shit, like that's that nah. is what it is. But the original Total Recall, the Arnold Schwarzenegger joint with Rachel Tacotton, yeah, uh, as the as the man, I had to think for the, her when the I love I, interest. Uh, <laughs> Uh, um, and I loved I loved the concept of the the memory cap, and the yeah. the fact that the, the the person that you're introduced to at the beginning of the film is not the person that guy is. How do you strange for real? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. See where the party is right there. <laughs> wow, get your ass to Mars. Oh yes, you said it right there, Richter. Michael fucking Ironside, dude. Yeah. Classic sci-fi villain. He <laughs> or has, if you watched V, classic hero. He um, has the number one line coming out of Total Recall. I can blow this whole place sky high and be home in time for cornflakes. That yes. is actually Velos Cohagen that says that. that. Oh, that's right. That is Ronnie Cox. <laughs> right. Ronnie Cox as the villain again in the one-two punch because he's the villain in Robocop, Robocop. as well. Yes, Ronnie yes. Cox. Um, he's keeping it in the family. Yeah, no. My, <laughs> actually, I think one of my favorite things that Richter says is when uh, Cohagen's yelling at him over the radio in the car and he goes, I'm sorry, sir. I'm getting sun spots. <laughs> Click <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One of the first uh, instances of oh, I, 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 I can't hear you click. Right, right. <laughs> and got to put this in here. Three titties. Okay, that's it. Yeah, that's Total it. Recall. The my number. Nice. My number five. Let's not forget Star Trek Five also had that. Nice. <laughs> All right, that's your number five. We're gonna go on. Well, I'm gonna I'll forget you said titties. that. I'm gonna forget you said that. See. I'm gonna forget that. Uh, Return of the Jedi had 16. <laughs> no, it was ah, episode it six. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take Children of Men. Ah, good oh, one. Uh, on I, was, yes. I, I, I was torn putting that on my list. Yeah. I, was, I was thinking uh, of it. I was like, a 14 on my list. <laughs> uh, there we go. It has uh, one of maybe three good Clive Owen movies. Uh, <laughs> Chuatel Ejiofor is maybe an antagonist. I guess we consider him that. Uh, generally considered one of the best long takes in oh, yes. film history. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Julianne Moore. Getting shot in the neck, which you don't see coming when you first watch that movie. No, no, no. Um, no. Michael, Michael, Caine. Michael Caine, just the hippied out Michael Caine. I want to see a whole movie just of Michael Caine asking people to pull his finger. <laughs> <laughs> a um, prequel to Children of Men. Prequel to Men, yes. The, the infants of men. This is what <laughs> happened to all the kids. <laughs> pull my finger. <laughs> it, uh, it's, it's, Children of Men is wonderfully shot, is wonderfully directed. Uh, as, uh, the first, I think, the world ever really saw of Alfonso Cuaron. Who may or may not show up again on this list? Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> oh boy! Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it is, I know where uh, that one's going. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's an amazing film. If, if people haven't seen Children of Men, I implore them to go out there and, and check that film out. 
that's my number five. Germain, what is your number five? My number five. Um, I'm going to go with a more recent um, sci-fi flick. Um, a little something from um, Blumkamp. Um, District, District 9. Nine. Nine. Good one. Uh-huh. Very good. See, I, well done. I like uh, and some of the best sci-fi, you know, uses, you know, these sci-fi concepts to actually tell a more human story. And District 9 does that in spades. Like, yeah. And I kind of, kind of, I can relate to it a bit because, yeah, that's kind of what we would do if um, aliens actually came down. We treat them like shit. That's exactly mm-hmm. what we, we would, would do. Yes. I said that from after day the one. wonder. Yeah, yeah the, the wonder of the new alien race. See, you, you mean see, one Spielberg? Week. Spielberg yeah, gives you that wonder week. of what we could be with you know interacting with aliens. District Nine was the real deal. Oh, yeah. yeah, I still contend that District Nine is a prequel to Independence Day. Can <laughs> convince me of anything? The else. first time I sat in the theater watching that, my wife was next to me, and um, we we're watching it. And uh, the, the news footage comes up at the beginning of the the ship's arrival, and the first thing she says is, "Wait, this really happened?" <laughs> I was like, "Nice." Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> it's too late now. I'm married. <laughs> At least you with the straightest possible face. You don't remember that? Yeah. Uh, Jeez, how did you miss this? How did you miss this? I mean, it was in it was in our elementary textbook. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the journey. I mean, yeah, the journey that um, the journey that uh, that, that Wickes Kobe. takes. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, He's such a great character in yeah, that movie, the man. End with the flower. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, so yeah. I think that kind of gave the world Charlotte Copley as well. And yeah. Bloom mm-hmm. at the yeah, same time. Yeah. It was a nice director actor one two pairing. Yeah. yeah. I think. For a and little while. I don't anyway. think he, I was gonna say, <laughs> I don't yeah, think yeah. he enjoyed nearly the the heights uh with the other with Elysium and, and Chappie, Chappie yeah. uh, as he yeah, did with no. District Nine. Yeah. I thought that was it took him a little bit longer to Shyamalan out yeah. than, yeah. than right. actual Shyamalan. Uh, I would argue he hasn't quite Shyamalaned out yet. I mean, he's, he was supposed to do Alien He's still movie. jockeying yeah. for yeah. Alien, yeah. 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 Really he still yeah. wants to do it. Yeah. So really, Scott fucked that franchise fuck up. <laughs> hard. Uh, the action in He did give nine. it a reach around at the end. Covenant <laughs> oh, doesn't okay. suck completely. but <laughs> um, Yeah, it, I think the action in that film is wonderfully shot. Oh, and yeah. Splattering across yeah. the camera. and It's kind of shot... Partially documentary style, yeah, yeah, yeah. and Which, looks real. They yeah. managed to they managed to make the 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 video camera esque action look real. When he gets in that fucking mech and starts shooting missiles at, That's, like I believe yeah, that shit. Yeah, like mm-hmm. I think that really that shit really happened. <laughs> yeah. you know so maybe your I mean? wife was onto something there. Yeah, right? maybe so. <laughs> uh, all right, sir. It is time for your number five. My next one is also a fairly recent. I think it's probably going to end up being the most recent movie on my list, and that is Ex Machina. Oh, oh, okay. This is why you asked in the thread. <laughs> is Ex Machina on there? <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's testing the waters. Number nine on my list. Yeah. Um, I found it uh, erotic because of um, Oscar Isaac primarily and his dancing. Um, and that's why it's on my list. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> that musical number comes out of nowhere. That's, that's yeah. not it. I mean, like, the whole movie is just great. And I love how it's just everything's confined, confined to this one building. I love the premise of the movie. I love how. How, how much the viewer is left guessing about the intentions of every single character in that house. Um, and Alicia Vikander is just convincing. That was, that was her big coming out. Every, yeah, every moment of that movie is convincing. Yeah, so. yeah, I think yeah, everybody did have their own. I think the only person who had pure intentions was Donald Gleason's character. Yeah. He was just like, all right, I want a competition. I want to come out here and put the shit through the most insane Turing test possible. While Oscar Isaac and Alicia Vikander both had their own hidden secret agendas yeah. to play. Um, so good. So good. And one of two movies that starred Oscar Isaac and Donald Gleason that year, because later on that year, Force Awakens came yeah, out. Yeah, we got to see him in a little independent yeah. film. <laughs> yeah, yeah they, 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 they did a little indie yeah. flick, and then they, went, they, did, they did a big budget bad boy after that. Uh, that is a f- fine, fine film. I went and saw that joint in theaters. Uh, it was me and maybe three other people, and I was like, what's wrong with America? <laughs> Probably a full packed Tyler Perry movie across the aisle. Right? <laughs> Medea's Ex Machina. I would totally I would see that. that. I would. Yes. <laughs> I'm a robot. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> all right. And with that, we have our first five all paired out. Uh, we're going to end part one of this right now. We'll be back next week to give you part two of the sci-fi movie 
draft. <laughs> My peoples, we are back once again to finish out our 2008 Paprika sci-fi movie draft. Uh, for those of you who don't remember from the previous week, we have Pete, Brian, and Germán, and myself all jockeying to see who can draft the best team of science fiction movies. When we last left our heroes here, uh, Brian had just taken Ex Machina off the board, much to my dismay. And the next pick, Brian, is on you. Okay, so for the next one, I'm going to go... I'm going to dial it back a little bit. Okay. Go with a classic. Uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. I had that higher on my list. And uh, Leslie Ellsworth, host of the Weekly Prophet, she was like, I don't know if you want to put that that high, but people voting on it. Yeah. It got destroyed when we did Best Sci-Fi Brackets uh, really? last season. I, it was I, it got blown up by like 70-some-odd votes. I felt, yeah, because I felt it, wasn't, it probably wasn't going to be mainstream <laughs> enough for people to... I got to go with it because it's, it's got the grandfather one of, of one of my absolute yeah. favorite movie villains of all time. Uh, Hal 9000. Yeah. Hal 9000. Yeah. yeah. Terrific. Uh, the dude who voiced Hal 9000 died last mm-hmm. week as of this yeah. recording. I yeah. believe so. Yeah. And uh, and uh, that Hallmark's got a uh, an ornament this year. That's Hal 9000. It's on my tree now. Oh, oh nice. 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 And it says everything you'd want it to say. <laughs> what does it say? Well, it says... Uh, I can't let you do that, Dave. Or, um, <laughs> you know, it says Daisy. Daisy. Does it sing Daisy? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and my wife, who's never seen the movie, is like, is it broken? Yes. <laughs> yes. Like, yes. Yes, yes, honey, it I'm is. like, just shut up. It's the best movie villain ever. It's like, it doesn't broken. sound like it. So what What? Uh, why, what a tragedy to do 2001 Space Odyssey? I, it's just, it's visually very interesting. It's revolutionary. Um, it's ambiguous, which I really, really love, uh, especially the final third of the movie. Um, with the the monolith and the you know origins of man and all of that stuff, kind of it comes together in a way that's very very ambiguous. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I love uh, the opening of the movie with the apes learning how to kill. Yes, um, I do believe it's the best Cooper film. And Hal and Hal is just so Psychotic. memorable. the The scene that I love the most is probably the lip reading scene. Yeah, they they fucked up bad. They thought yeah. they had all their precautions taken, and they didn't take that into effect. And that's what ends up fucking not Dave. Yeah, he's like he's <laughs> like a jilted lover that Hal nine thousand. Yeah, uh, a jilted lover from Urbana, Illinois. So, did we ever figure out? Is it uh, what really tipped them off that Hal was fucking up? Was it the them saying that the part was Hal saying the part was faulty when it wasn't faulty, or was that just a calculated move on Hal's part? I don't know. I don't know. The world may never know. 1969. Yeah. Uh, directed by the man who also directed the moon landing. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first, people. <laughs> heard it here first. All right. Uh, Germont, it All is right. back on you, sir. Okay. My next pick here. Um, this is actually, I think, I think this is actually going to be the most recent pick on my list here. Um, going to go with a little, another, another time travel um, epic here. Um, Looper. Oh, yeah. yes. Okay, Looper. Joseph, Gore, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, um, Bruce Willis, the, the, probably the last time he actually gave a shit. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that really was blunt. number yeah. 28 on my list. Yeah, Paul Dano. It was, yeah, it was a solid, solid movie. Yeah. First first I've seen of Ryan Johnson, I was like, I was really impressed. Yeah, really impressed. Yeah, I saw Looper before I saw Brick. And, uh, oh, man, is Looper good. Yes. Jeff it's, Daniels. It's Yeah, it's interesting how you look at... You know, Joseph Gordon-Levitt as young Joe and then old Joe and how they almost go, like, do a complete 180. Like, because he starts, like, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, like, young Joe starts off, he's pretty selfish all about himself and everything. And eventually he gets to the point where he, you know, does something selfless and heroic and everything. But then you see old Joe who's actually going back to try to fix things and make things right again. And eventually seeing himself become the villain. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what happens. Uh, yeah. that, that montage that lets you know what happens to get Joseph Gordon-Levitt to Bruce Willis. Terrible makeup aside. Oh yeah, it was. It yeah, is, that was jarring when you great. see. Like, yeah. It was a little weird. Yeah, great. it was, was a little. Was weird. that auctioned off at the end of shooting? Like, here's Joseph Jordan Gordon-Levitt's nose. Yeah. From- yeah. <laughs> Here's a tape we use to make his eyebrows a little so, weirder. So now wait, that was that was that was makeup. There wasn't an ounce of CG in his face no, at no, all. No, that was actually makeup. makeup. Yeah. Damn. Okay. Yeah, makeup. Uh, and how? 
Um, I, I fucking love that movie, man. Yes. I love that movie. Yes. I love the idea of Jeff Daniels as a futuristic mob boss. Oh, <laughs> dude, I think he's the arm of a futuristic mob boss. And the whole <laughs> concept of they just send people back in time to get killed until eventually uh, it's you that gets sent back. To Which, kill yourself. Does, does that does that that works right? You use the back, in your loop. You yeah. kill yourself, yeah. and then you still grow up to get sent back to kill yourself. All right, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That. that's that's the essence of the loop. Yeah, yeah. that a, loop. That loop can, you you grow up to go back to kill, to kill yourself. yourself. Yeah, yeah. To perpetuate but, this whole thing. Yeah. Well, you grow up to get killed to get sent back to be killed by yeah, yourself. Right, so. killed by but then you get to live your life to grow to that age. Yeah. And then have it happen again. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I was. We were describing that in reverse. I yeah. think. <laughs> it, it, it's it's kind of mind blowing in, in its concept. It'll. It, I you you got to try not to wrap your head around too hard. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Alrighty then. That is, it is on me next. Yes. Oh, I really don't want to do this. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna call an audible. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take Alien off the board. Ah. Yeah. Uh, good old '79 ah, 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 ah. Ripley joint. Alien. Uh, mm-hmm. The the first foray really into first good foray into science fiction horror. It really is just a haunted house in space. Oh, yeah. That's what that's what Alien is. But you get some great performances. Tom Skerritt up in there. John Hurt. It's, of course, it's, there's a, there's a lot of stuff in that movie Bilbo. about like labor disagreements. Yeah, <laughs> but that's so what that that. gives you to get care about the characters before they get killed. They have plans and agendas. Like yeah, yeah. Kogo just wants to get paid the money he thinks he deserves to get paid. It also that also grounds the film, I think, in a in a subtle realism. Yeah, that mm-hmm. they're not they're not explorers. These they're not the they're not off on a noble the cause. They're literally out mining and making money. Yeah, <laughs> like that's their whole fucking yeah. business. Whole reason they're in space. Ha- like uh, Parker and Brett. Don't even want to actually be in space. Right, they're right, just right, there right. to make money, right. and it's like, is the whole point of that. So, I think that that helps. The, the the more real, I think that you can make a, 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 a any sort of sci fi opera, a, a, the more real and relative you can make it to yourself, especially in the case of Alien, the more terrifying it becomes. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's all about. Confronting your fear, kind of, because Sir Gavernie Weaver is not getting off that shit without saving that stupid fucking cat. And look, if it's me, look, that cat's just dead. That's just that's all there is to it. That cat, that cat, you heartless bastard. Fuck Jonesy. All right, that, that cat is done for. Right? Yeah. Well, that's 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 the bait snack for the alien for me to get the fuck up out of there. All right then, uh, and Pete, it's on you, sir. That's, What's your okay, six? Oh. that's my number six. What are you gonna kill us on twice mm. now? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't have, any, I don't know that I have any one-two punches left. <laughs> uh, but um, let's see. You still do Star Trek: Insurrection and Nemesis if you want. Phantom <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Menace is still on the table. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and say. Shut up. <laughs> Star Trek First Contact. Okay. Oh, Star man. Trek First Contact that was, is what I'm going with. That was one of that was in my um that is one to me 100% the best of the next generation films for sure. Oh, easily. Yeah, on, easily is the keyword there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on par to run for best of the Star Trek series. Yeah. The, yes. the the that's the prime the prime timeline. That's definitely not the a, Kelvin timeline. The prime fighting timeline. words. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I love it. It's up. I, 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 it's up it. I said. I said on par. You'll notice my Star Trek two is number two. So, yeah. <laughs> like, clearly there's a hierarchy in my mind even. But Star Trek First Contact, damn, it's oh, they man. got so much number fifty right. On my list. They got so much right in that movie. Um, again, it's another one of those that's paced really well. It's really well acted. Features a, a, a cast much like the uh, you know the original saga of films with Kirk and Spock and everything. It f- features a cast that we're already very warm to. Yeah. If not a little soured because generations sucked a huge amount of donkey balls. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, it's just uh, they had they had a new look for the crew, a uh, new ship. Uh, a whole new environment to run around in, and Alice Krieg just wonder, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful as the Borg queen. I, queen, I loved um, Data's Temptation. Yeah, and she she just played the shit out of that too. <laughs> the scene where she gives him the real skin blow. and blows on it. Oh yeah, like yeah. that's that's just to that me that's just an <laughs> element. That was an element of that movie that I feel like was was heretofore un 
untouched upon in yeah. the Star in the Star Trek universe. There was certainly not, you know, you got that Riker and Troy, and then that one episode where uh, uh, Doctor Crusher fucked that ghost or whatever, you know. But <laughs> yeah, but you didn't. Re- it happened. Look no, it up. I, I know. I remember <laughs> what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, it happened. It happened. That's, but, uh, that's Star Trek for you. But you had those. You definitely had those elements of sensuality. But until. Like that, like that was some Fifty Shades shit before Fifty Shades was anything. And to have that as the element that is one of the things that you almost think is going to turn Data. Like that Data is going to be like, fuck these assholes. You are hot and sexy. I'm trying to get my arms blown off. (laughs) I'm trying to get my arms blown off. And All right. Yes, I always, uh, I always wanted to see a prequel to Generations where, like, it was just like the week before, and s- someone went around unscrewing like half the light bulbs on the ship, <laughs> <laughs> and that's why it looked like that. I think, I think First Contact is, yeah, definitely the yeah. best of the next generation set of movies. And it gives us, it, it, it humanizes. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Uh, go ahead. I, I you, a, you had a but. thing because I have a butt, and I think that it gets a lot about Picard wrong. And that's my big problem with it. See, because I think Picard has gotten to a point by the end of that series, it's not that, that he's been through uh, Best of Both Worlds. He's He's been through Descent. He's been through Iborg. Iborg is a real big one for me. Mm-hmm. But he's gotten to this point where his better nature has has won. Yeah. And I, I find watching Picard as Captain Ahab for 90-some minutes to be off-putting in a way that... It wasn't. It was like this. Doesn't feel like my Picard. See, oh, see, I love. I like. Him see, I like that role. Yeah. Well, to to me, that I I totally understand what you're saying, but it felt it felt natural given the subject matter he was dealing yeah. with. I, I mean, think all it, these that's that whole and you you said I, I bored mean, too. Like, like all of that, he tried to shed yeah, and tried like to get past, and now here the whole thing is fucking staring. Not only yeah. stared him in the face, but literally poised to defeat him and everyone he loves. Yeah. I, I I think I'd have a little a little schism as well. Him, you know what I mean? It was, like, it I think it's a deal with PTSD, basically. Mm-hmm. I think, I think yeah. for absolutely me the, 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 yeah. space PTSD for yeah. sure. The, the deal breaker for me is the scene in the holodeck where he just goes ape shit. Yeah. Oh, with, with, Tommy with the Tommy gun, and I'm like, ah, yeah, uh, what? See, is I this? loved. Uh, I think that moment, like um, the moment for me for Picard was when. He, him and Worf were arguing about, you know, should Dude, we abandon that's some the good ship? acting When right he there. literally called mm. Worf a coward, like, I, I remember I was in the theater watching it, everybody gasped. Everybody gasped, yeah. 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 I, I was too. like, if you were any other man, I would kill you. <laughs> uh, that and the back-to-back scene with that and him talking with uh, with Alfre Water. Yeah. When he, they must be stopped here. That, <laughs> uh, that was some... That's this far, no farther. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, then, Pete, it's on you again, yeah. sir. Okay, so Star Trek First Contact... What do I follow this with? All right, so now, now here is where here is where my what would be con- what would be considered like a uh, collectively considered great sci-fi, and what I think is great sci-fi. Okay, okay. These uh, uh, my list has a lot of these times when these lines intersect, and this is definitely one of them. The Last Starfighter. Ooh, ooh, oh, okay. Ooh. All right. Not on any of our lists. No. Not on my list. I don't. It, I wouldn't. I, honestly, I would not expect this to be on any of your lists. No, no. I mean, um, I own it. Huh? I, I own it. <laughs> it's just not on my list. Well, I I put this as I personally think that this is some of the greatest science fiction of all time. Okay. Because it is, it is solid, straight up wish fulfillment. That is the whole point of the film. Somehow it's the best video game movie we've had so far. <laughs> yeah, right? That's true. But it's... Fair enough, and, yes. and, <laughs> and now, you know... I, I, you the wizard take, for the win. You got to take my, my analysis of this movie with a grain of salt because I've seen it probably more than the people who made it. <laughs> okay. I, I, I absolutely adore this film. And one of the reasons that I like it is because of Alex Rogan, because of the main character. Yeah. His life fucking sucks balls. Yeah. Okay? And he, the... When you when the only thing you have to look forward to is the arcade game, game at the yeah. top of the hill, at the fucking shop no one goes to, yeah. because your entire day has been filled with fixing other people's fucking problems all day, yeah. like there is so there's a lot of underlying complexity to Alex Roken that that the target audience, which was me when I was fucking seven, yeah. you know, 
the target audience isn't going to, I didn't know that. I didn't get that. Yeah. When I was 18, I got that because, you know, you have to get this job and get money and you have responsibilities and shit. But when I was seven years old, I didn't understand why Alex Rogan's life sucked. I only understood that he went to go play Starfighter and that was fucking cool. Yeah. You know? It takes on a whole different meaning when you Right. And then you get older and it's like, holy shit. No, no, no. He's a much more, he's a much more complex character than our young minds gave him credit for. Okay. Um, but the but then the 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 issue with Last Starfighter, and I would love I'll be honest with you I'm not you know I'm not with the reboots or all this well, I would love to see a reboot of Last Starfighter I would love to see years. it with today's tech I've been saying this for years yeah. because if one thing you remake you remake Last Starfighter because be, yeah because they were limited it's like it's like Howard Stark says in Iron Man two I am limited by the technology of my time and they certainly were yeah, um, yeah. up to that point the only movie that had been done with any sort of with any sort of live action CG was Tron and that, it was Tron. Classic. It's on my list. <laughs> it's on my list. <laughs> it's probably on yours too. But, <laughs> but that was, you know, that was the only time that anybody had really seen anything like that. And to see it, to see them try to make it to a point where it wasn't a computer simulation, it was actually photorealistic. That huge step, huge step. And, and, and even if, even if they maybe didn't get it right, You've got to hand it to the filmmakers for wanting to use that Cray computer to yeah, yeah. to they, they to tried. slay this film. They you know tried. what I mean? And mm-hmm. yeah, so to, to, and to also find out that the same Cray that was used to make Last Starfighter was also used to create uh, uh, proof of concept for a CG X wing for Empire Strikes Back that ah. did not end up getting used. Okay. Wow. That's... So so there was a lot of there was a lot of uh, uh, behind the scenes contribution to today's sci fi that was going on with that film that a lot of people don't didn't realize unless they watched all the special uh, features on the DVD, <laughs> which I have multiple times. There you big go. fan of Lance Guest. <laughs> Never saw him in fucking anything else, but I'm a big fan of him in that movie. So <laughs> Last Starfighter. It's there there it is. And it also didn't escape the uh, that mid 80s trend of having this one scene right in the middle of it that will fuck you up <laughs> because no, yeah. the scene where the, that that the beta clone, unit the beta unit is in bed still taking on his persona <laughs> which I guess it had to get in bed so it could no. cover itself in his skin I don't no. know no fuck I was like I was like up. no is that bad is that the bad guy because mm-hmm. when they, when he gets shot or whatever I was like Good, right? <laughs> he was an imposter <laughs> and ugly, right? It was disgusting. It so. was when I was when I was a kid. I remember my father. My father took me to see that movie. I begged him. I begged, I was like, "Oh my god, I gotta go see this movie." And my dad, of course, my dad hates science fiction. I mean, he's coming around now. You know, as we get older, and I keep impressing him. Was but it Transformers: Age of Extinction is what pulled him in. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, that movie doesn't. That movie doesn't even. Even when my kids are smart enough to realize that movie's a chunk of shit. <laughs> But uh, but my my father went and took me to that movie, and I was so pumped. And even up to that point, I was pumped. When that happened, like I was like, I, like I flattened back in my seat. And my dad's like, "What's wrong?" Like he didn't. He just thought it was some fucking puppet that was you know glowing. Yeah, that and it's not real. No, I'm real. like that puppet doesn't have any fucking eyelids. <laughs> ah, you know. <laughs> so that kind of fucked me up a little bit. But yeah. but to, I think that that movie's. Overall contribution to today's science fiction can't be overstated, and fair that's enough. why it's on my list. Good, fair enough. All right, uh, I'm. I, I just can't take that movie. I'm skipping it. I don't know why I put it so high. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just can't. Not in good good faith. Uh, people would vote for it, but I just can't. I'm going to go ahead and take what is number twelve on my list. Dread. Oh, a good oh, pick. Oh, good yes. pick. When you can't pick the raid. Pick Dread. Yeah. One hundred percent correct. That's what I was gonna say. I was uh, like, "You mean the Raid one point five? Yeah. Direct <laughs> or written by Alex Garland, who directed Ex Machina and Annihilation, and all that good stuff. Uh, it is it, it it is another great video game movie. That's not a video <laughs> game. It is Batman's Arkham Asylum. It yes. is just a dude trying to get from the bottom floor to the top floor and every piece of bullshit and tomfoolery that he has to deal with with just Mm -hmm. him a gun and a rookie and it it is obviously far better than the Stallone oh of course course. Carl Urban uh is our you know he is the low key pop culture king man he yeah, gave man. us dread he gave For us sure. bones he gave us Aomer from Lord of the Rings he's an um, MCU yeah. like dudes everywhere he's he has picked stuff that's great for fans of pop culture and I think that shines through here and mouth work that's all he has to do with his the helmet covering his yeah. entire face and, yeah. he acts with his mouth and he does a great great job oh don't forget yes. Chronicles of Riddick. 
and Chronicles of Riddick. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Uh, Lena Headey as the as the villain oh, in mama, this joint. Yeah, uh, some yeah. of the, the the wildest visuals of her uh, oh, yeah. being tossed off while uh, yeah. while on the mm-hmm. slow mo. Is... That was probably one of the best uses of 3D that I have seen in a long time. Oh, I didn't see in 3D. Well, the 3D like all the slow mo oh, yeah. scenes were in 3D. I remember, I remember yeah. seeing oh, that. Okay. So every yeah. time they were on the on the slow mo, you know, it looked like the, the drops and yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. yep, yep. That was very, very good. <laughs> All right, then. Uh, what you got, Germain? What's your number six? Okay. Um, I'm going to have to call an audible here, too, because I see this hasn't been taken off the board yet, so I'm going to have to just kind of pull it here. Um, I'm going to go uh, Star Trek 2009. Ooh. Ah. Well done. Yes. Well yes. done. Yes. That's a good one. J.J. Abrams. Um, Killed you know, it. He yeah. made Star Trek for everybody. Yeah, again, mm-hmm. and that yeah. was that was what the franchise needed more than anything else. It got me. Re- it got me interested in the franchise again. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, um, it. He dealt. He did a reboot so brilliantly, like the way he went about doing it, using time travel to basically reboot the entire franchise. It's the only thing he could have done to make the fan base happy yeah. and to draw in new people. It's the right. only option to simultaneously celebrate and destroy. Yeah. But yeah. Did <laughs> Did he make the fan base happy? Because it's all the no, old gray no, hairs I mean, that was, were. It, I say, it was safe for the old gray hairs. It was the only way he could have done it. Yeah. yeah. Because you can't just say, oh, all that shit you love from your past never happened. That is like, that's fanboy 101. Yeah. You can't do that. That's true. It so happened, what we say is, but, it happened, but this is a parallel this is a reality. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, if you play enough Star Trek online, they refer to that as the Kelvin timeline. Right. Kelvin timeline, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was number um, right. 31 they, on my list. Yeah, it was, um, the, the, ca- the casting was just brilliant. All across Brilliant. the board. Yes. Yeah. Across that the board. That was well cast. Yes. The most probably one of the most well casted movies I've seen in a long time. It's a great ensemble time. cast. Yes. For sure. Uh, the visuals, man, I fucking Yes. Know. The primary colors yeah. in that movie, the blues, the reds, and the yellows mm-hmm. pop. Yes. It like was nice to business. see primary colors in a sci fi movie again. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. honestly, I think that before that, the last time I had seen like full on primary color wheel was the fifth element. And I believe yeah. Yes. And I believe the only um, appearance from Tyler Perry that we'll see on this list. At all. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you never know. <laughs> you never know. Medea at Star's End is on my list. No, that's Han Solo at Star's End. Right. Oh. Medea at Star's oh, End. Up. F- featuring Medea. So, Medea um, and the Cave of Thon Boca. I saw <laughs> set faces to grits. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Episode title. <laughs> set phasers to grits. Uh, I saw that movie. I saw that movie three times the first day it came out. Oh in two God. different states. Uh, I was here waiting for my daughter to be born. Uh, <laughs> okay, she, hold on. So you were trying to get in three viewings. I like, wasn't trying to. How much have you just, dilated? You okay, did, I got time did. for one more. <laughs> <laughs> I was here waiting for her to be born. She was late. I had to be back up in Maryland because uh, it was my son's birthday. So I'm here. She's late. The The midnight showings back where well, those were still a thing. Right. I went to the midnight showing. I hit the road to go back up to Maryland where I was living at. Mm-hmm. Uh, I lived straight from the theater. Got back to Maryland like 9 a.m. on like a Friday. Everybody was still at work. So I'm like, I might as well just go see a matinee of Star Trek. Went and saw the matinee. All my friends get off work and they're like, yo, we're going to go see the Star Trek. You're going to watch it? Yes. Yes, I do. Oh, man. You know, I hadn't thought about watching that, but sure. Three times in two different states the first day it came out. Um, Oh, it is. It is the perfect Blu ray movie, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, Oh, yeah. I bought a Blu ray player specifically because of it. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Uh, The the, the bridge looks like an Apple store. You get that all the time. Right. Oh, my God. Yeah. The lens flares. I love it. I love it all, man. The lens flare, the red shirt that dies. Yeah. Uh, It felt very. Yeah, even though they touched a lot of the tropes from the original series without, like. Yeah, without beating you. Without beating you over the head with it, it. it yes felt, like the rest of the ship felt really claustrophobic and like yeah. i liked that like it felt like a small insular vessel with a pretty large bridge mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah i like that uh the the, the brewery of engineering yeah. is uh because they filmed it in an actual brewery yeah. it is amazing uh all right brian it is on you all right i'm gonna stick with the star trek uh and just go ahead and get the last movie of the star treks that i would have considered for my list since the rest have already been Called, but this would have so. been my second pick anyway, before 2009, before certainly before First Contact, and that is Star Trek VI: The Undiscovered Country. Hell yes, yes. bravo! Which uh, I think gives the original cast the best possible send off. Absolutely, oh, yeah. um, and it also gives the 80s the best possible send off. Yes. We also be communism because it's 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 movie. it's a post uh, Cold War movie, right? Yeah, uh, it's. 
it's so great from beginning to end. I mean, if it's if you just want a surface reading of it, you can go and enjoy it. Christopher Plummer is awesome in it. Choose the uh, scenery like nobody's <laughs> business. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like... And it's you, all better for it. You know, The you dinner got, scene, dude. Oh, the, the fucking dinner, dinner scene, scene. is terrific. Guess uh, who's coming to dinner? Uh, Chekhov says it best, and then... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Perfection, lot of, dude. A lot of great lines in that movie. Old Vulcan proverb, only Nixon could go to China. Yeah. yeah I was like, oh, come on. <laughs> really? are, we, are we doing that? Are we really going there? Romulan ale is no longer allowed to be served in diplomatic <laughs> countries. <laughs> Second uh, star to the right and straight on till morning. Yeah. Just dude. everything. Everything in that movie the is big the perfect tackle, set-off. Kirk, Enterprise. Yeah. Uh, there's, yeah you're Kim right, Cattrall. Oh, oh man, yeah, that's where I fell in love with Kim Cattrall. Yeah, that's yeah. one that of was the reasons it. I fell in love with Brunette. It Valeris. was Kim Cattrall and it was Princess Leia. Are the reasons <laughs> I love Brunette as much yeah. as I do. Oh, and and Spock getting legit angry. Oh yeah, what yeah. you want is irrelevant. What you've chosen is at hand. And yes. smacks a fucking phaser out of her hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they let Lenny more. Even the techno babble is at the top of its game because there's this weird scene where they're doing surgery, surgery on, on a torpedo. The, and, and there's just like one shot of them doing stuff and, and Leonard Nimoy's like, connect echo bars. And we're like, the fuck is the he fuck talking about? What the fuck is an echo bar? <laughs> I love, Cut to something and else. Then, and then Amazon Echo came out. I love right? McCoy's, we know. McCoy's follow-up is fantastic. I'd Alexa, give real money if he'd shut up. Right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Alexa, launch torpedo. <laughs> uh, so much, uh, they, they, they Shuffling lean. songs by launch torpedo. <laughs> <laughs> they lean heavy into the Shakespeare. Oh, for oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Movie. And yeah. also they lean heavy into yet another nautical theme. So they, they narrow the corridors in mm-hmm. the uh, in the movies to, to replicate the feeling of a submarine. Mm. Yeah. And they, they're wonderful. Uh, Nicholas Meyer directed Star Trek 2 and 6. That's what I was just thinking. Ones. Well, hence, I'm, they're the best, the best of the ones. series. Yeah. Easily the two best. Oh, yeah. For sure. Uh, right. Was that the one where... Uh, that was also the one, wasn't it, where Iman I guess was, Kirk was oh, basically finally coming to terms with his racism, basically? Yeah, <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Let the them end, you, die, you yeah, said. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. So, so like, Iman. Yeah. You've restored yeah. my, my father's faith, and you've restored my son's. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. Ah, so many good lines. The Kittimer Conference, man. <laughs> That's what uh, it's all about. Everything, never the been... meeting at Camp Kittimer. Yeah. So and that, that, uh, that one act, too. Like I said, I mean, I've been, I play a lot of Star Trek online, too. It, they re- they've referenced the Kittimer Conference constantly. And, and that's a that's a huge part of of why even in the uh, original series or the uh, next generation series, like that's a large part of the reason why Klingons are our, our Federation buddies now. Yeah, mm-hmm. because of that one act, that one thing. And I like that it was like maybe three years into Next Generation's run, and mm-hmm. you see that, and it's like, oh, yeah, oh, I get yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, Brian, it's on you again, sir. Oh crap, it is. Uh, let's see, what are we gonna pick next? Star Trek Six is number forty on my list. Mm-hmm. Oh. All right. Um, All sorts of stuff still out there. I think 09 was the only Star Trek I even considered because I thought the I knew Wrath of Khan was off the table immediately. Yeah. First contact was yeah. gone. Yeah. I knew. <laughs> okay, so I was I, I think you know the biggest or the best trilogy of films of the last decade is probably the Planet of the Apes movies. Ooh, and of, the of those Planet of the Apes movies. My favorite was the truly Shakespearean Dawn, Dawn. of the Planet oh, of the Apes. Yes. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> yes, that's the one I was going to go with. Unbelievable. Like, yes. like I loved Rise of the Planet of the Apes. It was a big, big surprise uh, for it to be as good as it was. But it kind of, sort of like Batman Begins, kind of felt a little safe. It felt like yeah. we're, we're just, we're putting this out there. We're not adding too many weird flourishes to it. It's still going to be something very familiar to you. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes said... No, Shakespeare with monkeys. Yeah, and yes. and you, you just got something. Yeah, fuck you if you don't like it. Like, like, yeah. I think I, I think I think like like Caesar is like a character. Like it, you don't get many characters like this no. in pop culture where you see the youth of this character and you see him age yeah. and you see him die. Spoilers, and you get this entire life, and it's like. Eat your heart out, fucking think, Planet of the Apes. I think Koba like, is the best villain of that whole trilogy. Oh, Koba's great. Yeah. And, and I, love, I love how he keeps showing up in the third one, too, yeah, as this sort of haunting figure. When yeah. you're watching those movies and like you're sitting there you know, watching Caesar and all, interact with all these other characters and everything, you're realizing... This is a CGI ape emoting. Like, and yes. Andy Serkis. That's Andy yeah. Serkis yeah. coming yeah. through Circus. right there, baby. Yeah. yeah. All right. It's on you there, Germain. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Hmm. Do I go there? Do I go there? Mm-hmm. Oh, I know. I know. I know. Okay. Um, I'm gonna um, gonna go another route here. Go the uh, 
I know Jurassic Park has been the only Spielberg that's been picked so far. Uh-oh, uh-oh. I'm going to go ahead and go in with uh, Minority Report. Ah, Ooh, motherfucker. Wow. Good job. <laughs> yes. Ah, oh, damn it. Yes. My that was on report. my shit. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. What yeah. a great flick. Number 35 oh on my list. Visually, uh, of course, is the amazing Spielberg. You can't can't go wrong with that. Um, I think it's one of the most underrated. There is multi-layered visuals yes. in that movie. Yeah. From 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 where he starts to where he ends up, you can say there's, there's legitimately a cinematic tonal shift yeah. through the entire film. Great. Yeah. Movie. Another another one of Tom Cruise's great performances. Um, he gave the world Colin Farrell's one. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. right. I remember. Yeah, that was that's one a fantastic of his earlier character ones. too. Yeah. We also get that awesome scene where he has to chase his own eyeball down a hallway. Yeah. <laughs> You know how many times I've referenced switching out my eyeballs <laughs> since that movie came out? <laughs> All the time. All the time. Well, Cromwell was in that too, wasn't he? No, that's that Max was, von Sydow. Okay, yeah. 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 Same guy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, come on now. <laughs> they look. I couldn't. I couldn't pick them out. That'll do, Pazuzu. I could. I could. <laughs> <laughs> but there was the whole, you know, of course, um, with the great sci-fi. There's always, you know, that thought-provoking philosophical debate. Like, yeah. if you prevent somebody from committing a crime, do they really commit a crime? And you mean like them? Marvel Civil War Two is all basically, based on yeah. That. <laughs> right. Uh, I think it's an amazing movie. Yes. I mean, it, it shows the best of Tom Cruise running, uh, yeah. haunted by the loss of his son. <laughs> yeah. It is. Did we just bring up Tom Cruise running again? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, his, that's his thing. <laughs> that's what Tom Cruise running known for is yeah. what he's that's known great. for. Hey, there's nothing bad about that. At all. At all. No. Good call. No, sir. that film's great. Good call. My, man. One of my, great my, movie. My old ex, that was one of her favorite movies. She would watch that ad nauseum. That's but, a movie I own. Yeah. It's a movie in my collection. All right. It is back over to me now. So let me go on and scoop this up before somebody else does. I'm going back to the 80s. John Carpenter. The Thing. Oh! Good call. Good one. Good one. Good one. That's a good one. Uh, I didn't put it on there because my dad hated it. I'm like, what? why? <laughs> like, like. I mean, is he going to be voting with He, he went like this, and, and you won't be able Mr. to Martin. see it, but he was like, hey, I watched that movie. <laughs> Just thumbs, thumbs down. down, and I'm like, "The fuck movie did you watch? It wasn't that one." <laughs> it, uh, I mean, for, it, how could he not like it? It's got Wilfer Brimley in it. I know, right? Nah, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's just uh, the the paranoia that plays <laughs> in with with anybody could be the alien at any given time. Paranoia is know. the number one factor in that. It film. is the number one, and it's like it's it's, it's a different kind of paranoia because it's like. If you're running around Charlotte and you don't know who's trying to kill you, that's the kind of paranoia. This is enclosed, less than a dozen people. You're nowhere close to And no escape. Yeah. Like that's, that's a whole different Death kind. in every direction. Yeah. You know? <laughs> you don't know where it's going to come from. Yeah. Uh, Keith David, obviously. you know, And then the whole, you don't know if either one of them is the alien at the end of them. It could mm-hmm. be Keith David. It's the best. One of my favorite endings of all time and my favorite closing lines of oh, all yeah. time. Just... Wow, what a thing! Yeah, they're just both like, let's just go our, our ways. Yeah, um, and then yeah, and they're just ch- 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 chasing a, a dog <laughs> at the beginning. Like, That's how you open up a movie, trying to kill a dog. Okay, uh, I'm on for this. It is, uh, <laughs> and then the, the practical effects, man. When that dog changes, when I saw fucking for the, first time, the head, <laughs> the yeah, t- I was like, what the fuck am I watching? <laughs> it is. I love the thing, man. and I the just, practical effects in that movie continue to surprise. The yeah. where they're trying to shock Norris alive, and his hands go through him, and and then teeth uh, bite the guy's uh, hands uh, off, uh, and then Norris' head comes off and turns into a fucking spider and runs. <laughs> like even just sitting here describing it out loud is like, oh my god, I got to see that movie again. Yeah. How you know, did like, anybody pitch that? Like, seek professional help. <laughs> <laughs> how do you talk? How do you start to talk to somebody about something like that? All right, I had this idea. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's also uh, for you. I think since you picked the thing, uh, it would be fair for you to give an honorable mention to the more recent The Thing given that it was a very effective prequel it to ties, that movie. It ties very nicely dovetails into the beginning of the thing. Yep. Um, I saw it for the first time two years ago. No, I'm sorry, one year ago. I sat down and watched it for the first time Halloween of last year. I was like, let me watch a scary movie, something I've never seen before. Let me watch a thing. People keep talking about it. Yeah. I was blown away. It was it. really good, I right? Was blown away. I thought it was, you know, I had heard people set, talk about like, oh, it's, is it a reboot? Is it a remake? Is it a, is it a, what, what is it? Fucking straight up prequel. <laughs> straight up, like to the minute. Yeah. Here, here's the Norwegians going off to chase the dog. Here's the old school 80s movie, Norwegians chasing the dog. I was like, holy fuck. You could literally view these movies back to back and it wouldn't harm it at all. Yeah, it works. Other than, you know, the tonal shift in celluloid versus digital, but yeah, yeah, yeah take you, that but you get it. 
All right, then, Pete, it is on you. Okay. We have three picks left. Well, man. let's get this out of the way. Avatar. Really? Sure. Yep. Okay. Go yep. For it. I'm actually surprised that we're so late. <laughs> All uh, right, I, <laughs> not on my list. No. You know what? I, I I am. I've heard a lot of people bag this flick because I, I've heard it referred to as uh, Fern Gully in space. Yeah. yeah, I prefer Dances with Wolves in space, but whatever. <laughs> um, I, I, you know what? I the trailer sold me, man. That the the uh, the Ikran grabbing the helicopter. That was that was it for me, man. Yeah. When that, when I saw that shit, I had been at the time I had been like playing around with uh, trying to you know because I was doing big role playing games and and you know because we're all nerds here, you guys get that. Uh, uh, but fantasizing with how to how to create a how to create a, an, an interesting world, and I thought, wouldn't it be cool if like tech and and nature just fucking clash and mm-hmm. and could clash on equal ground not i have tech and missiles so i can just fucking burn everything but like yeah. nature being able to stomp out like the tech ewoks the get out <laughs> get out <laughs> not on my show i'm gonna pretend you didn't say that brian um <laughs> not on my show. but you know what i'm saying like 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 the two of them tech and nature standing on equal footing and you not really knowing not really being able to eke out like who's gonna Who's gonna come out on top in that? Yeah. And when I saw the Ikran hit the 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 helicopter in the trailer, I was like, "Fucking going to see that shit!" <laughs> and I went to see it, and it was it was very very long, but to me, it didn't feel overblown. Uh, I saw it in I saw it in its natural three D state. So I mean, one of the only times you could get like not not reverse engineered three D, but like fucking legit. Yeah. This is how 3D is supposed to look. I think that it, that enhanced the experience as well. Um, Sigourney Weaver killing it. Sam Worthington being awesome. Like, uh, just... Uh, well, in a few times Sam Worthington was awesome because we haven't seen him since. Nope. <laughs> and not really. He did not that really. Terminator and just vanished. Mm. Mm. Vanished all that. He's got something coming down. Oh, come on day. now. Clash of the Titans was okay. He's got something coming <laughs> no, They <laughs> gave me a Boobo the Owl joke in that movie, so I'm solid with it. <laughs> I, I'm good with it. There but, was... A, there was a, the, the, before they released Avatar, they did a... Maybe twenty minute preview in IMAX. I, I was like, pro, it was like eight months before it came out or something. But it was just like a, a ticketed event, and you just had to go and you could get tickets to it. See, and, wow, uh, yeah. And so I saw like fifteen minutes of the movie in three D, and it was like I came out of there and I was like, that thing is going to be fucking huge. And you will be correct. It, and it is was the billion dollar movie that nobody talks it's, about. It's today. amazing that it that that's how it ended up, right? I've never seen a movie that is that. J- genre specific and that you know heavily in the culture that literally uh, like five years later it's like like in one year you might see a random navi at like a like at a comic con mm-hmm. or That's something what i was gonna say in one year everybody was navi the next year nothing yeah but i will tell you i don't know how long it's been since you guys have been to disney world but oh they do have that avatar. um uh, it's been 17 years oh, okay <laughs> um i will tell you right now that the pandora at Animal Kingdom is one of the neatest things I've ever seen at a theme park ever. I went on both rides, the uh, the the riverboat cruise, which is basically like you get in and the the they, um, the whole concept for that land is that uh, an, uh, 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 a a um, what am I say a nature preserve company has gone to Pandora in the years following uh, the movie Avatar because oh, okay. because. Uh, RDI, you know, at the, very, at the end of the movie, they kick RDI off the planet, right? Yeah. So now this uh, this Habitat for Humanity, whatever company comes, I can't remember what it's called, but comes and and lives there, and basically does what Grace was trying to do the whole time, like integrates Integrate with the Navi the to preserve their culture, yeah. not necessarily teach them English, but preserve who they are and teach who they are to other people. <laughs> so that's the whole concept for the. Because, you know, it's, it's Disney. It's the Imagineers. They've always got a concept for all their shit, right? Yeah. So the riverboat cruise is that company taking you on a boat down the river to show you certain Navi things. So there's, hmm. you know, there's bullshit off. And it's a very, very cool ride. But Flight of Passage, that ride made me love the film again. Because the, all, the whole idea behind that is that you're going to bond with a Navi and ride an Ikran on its first flight. Like oh, wow. the like that the Navi is going to go and have its first 
you're going to connect with the econ for the first time yeah. and take that first initial flight. Huh. So it's a motion ride. Yeah. But it's the screen like curves. So as long as you stare straight ahead, it's literally all you see. Yeah. There's there's wind blown in your face. There's smells. There's there's whooshes as you go underneath trees. It's got some of the best computer graphics I've ever seen. The thing lands like this. It's got stuff on the inside. You can feel the econ breathing when like underneath your legs. It is the it is the neatest ride I've ever been on. My wife and I both rode it, and we got off the ride. We were in tears. Fucking like, I was Disney. literally crying. Like, and I'm fucking like, you know, I love when shit blows up and people die. I'm fucking in tears coming off this ride. It was the most surreal experience that I've ever had. We went back to the hotel and watched the fucking movie. Like, <laughs> immediately. It was like, let's fucking watch that movie again. So it made, the ride made me love the film again. So I've got to put it on my sci-fi All right. list. All right. Sure. Then it's on you again. Oh, and I have to know. What? It's your turn again. Oh, it's your turn again, yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to gush about Avatar. (laughs) It's a really fucking good movie. Literally, none of us expected this. (laughs) I know. Literally, (laughs) the second reference to the Titanium I've ever heard. (laughs) 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 Um, The other one was the core. (laughs) (laughs) All right, right? Okay, and um, and let's see. What number am I? It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm on eight, right? So we got three left. Yeah, yeah, two left. Two left? Yep. Shit. So this is nine right here. This is nine. Wait. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I can't fucking count. Okay. Um, all right, then I got to get this one out of the way, too. This is another one, another place where it's going like that. Event Horizon. Ooh, good one. Ooh. I like that. Okay. Event Horizon. Okay. That was the first movie I thought of for when this bracket came up. And it's not anywhere near the top of my list, but yes. Yeah. Event that Horizon. That was actually nowhere on my radar. It I- is uh, s- number <laughs> 60. On my list. I intend to set the charges and you blow the event horizon to hell. movie ever. <laughs> <laughs> I intend to blow the event horizon to hell. I, Fuck this ship. I yes. came fully prepared, sir. That's Good it's uh, the, the Lawrence Fishburne and Sam Neill yeah, Sam back Neal, fucking man. back in that fling. Yeah. Like, yeah, and it, not really knowing initially. Like, I mean, Sam Neill coming off, you know, Jurassic, Jurassic Park, Park or whatever. Yeah. But also Sam Neill in the Mouth of Madness. Like, yeah. you'll see a motherfucker yeah. go crazy. <laughs> and then he pulls that, like, it's like he channels that character again in the in the second act of Event Horizon. And now we've got this dude going crazy. Rips his own fucking eyeballs out. Dude, movie. Yes. Awesome. I, I wanted to see what happens when on the other side of the thing. Out. I wanted to see, well, pretty sure I know what happens when you rip your eyeballs out. Oh, okay. Motherfuckers aren't seeing anymore. But, <laughs> um, but the video, the Liberate Tutte Me Sex in Fetus, you know, yeah. he's, yeah. he's holding hell. the eye. Yeah, he's, they're holding the eyeballs. And the one guy puts the, the, vi- the little clips of the video that you can see. And one guy puts his fist through the other guy's fucking head. Comes, it's a wild people movie. People fucking. And it just crazy, crazy shit in that movie. And very disturbing. The, the sets themselves, like I, I remember watching that flick and, and seeing the gravity drive and going, who the fuck builds a ship like this? Yeah. Like who designs this? Uh, uh, I'm inside the fucking box from Hellraiser thing, only it's a cube. You know what I mean? Like, it, very, very cool. Like, a lot, a lot of good acting. Kathleen Quinlan's in that movie. Yeah. Uh, uh, what's his nuts? Uh, fuck, then, oh my God. The the surgeon, the, the trauma surgeon. Um, Dr. Julian Bashir. <laughs> I do believe it's the name you're looking for. Sir. Wow! Wow! Uh, <laughs> um, no, I, the he's the <laughs> God. He's like a, he's a bad guy in a bunch of stuff. Um, shit. You shouldn't let James Cromwell uh, German. No, <laughs> uh, Ronnie Cox. Matt Mickelson. <laughs> Ronnie Cox. He's a bad guy. Matt Mickelson. <laughs> Matt Mickelson. He's a bad no, guy. No, this is before his stock. This is way before his stock went up. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Oh God, I can't remember his name. But hey, that doesn't matter. <laughs> Somebody will, I'm sure, Google it and put it in the thread and in, in the Facebook group. But oh, yeah. yeah, Event Horizon, uh, equal parts horror and sci-fi. It is fantastic. It is. That's it. All right, then it is on me. I got two left. I think I've narrowed it down. <laughs> I don't know why I came with a list of sixty some odd movies. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm well. I'm the- well rationed though. Uh, <laughs> You had to make sure all your bases were covered, man. Yeah, I can understand bases. that. I'm going to go. Do I go with the voting movie? Do I go with the good movie? Mm. Do you mm. want to win or do you want to be cool? Yeah. Well, I am the reigning champ of the draft, so I, I think I guess I had to win. Play to win. I got to play the win. I thought I had this all locked up. Oh, man. All right, give me a second here. <laughs> the Ewok Adventure. <laughs> All right, you know, uh, it's more of a naturalist this? kind of movie. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna take uh, 
Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Yes. Good pick. Someone uh, had figured, to. I figured that was one of the Spielbergs. It was gonna right, go. right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It was. It was. It was three that I was thinking. <laughs> that and the Terminal, right? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, I that's, actually like that movie. It's a lady, lady, lady awesome. killers, yes. lady killers. I thought for sure it was going to be catch me if you can. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, it is. It's Spielberg and had of his height of his Spielberg magic. You get Rick Dreyfus, uh, the worst dad on film. <laughs> no um, shit, pretty bad. Doesn't even know bad. how to eat potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> um, this means something. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, another person I will not name because it is a trivia question coming up tonight. Uh, mm. Uh, Francois Truffaut, French director, is in there as well. Uh, there's I'm sorry, a, what? Francois Truffaut is his name. Oh, uh, yeah, French. Yeah, he's the uh, he's one of the guys. He actually, has the word the, French in his name. <laughs> Francois. Oh, Francois. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to tell you right off the bat. I'm not getting that question right. <laughs> <I'm> probably <laughs> not either. <laughs> Luckily, that's not the question. Luckily for you guys, it is. Uh, it is the good alien arrival. Uh, story. It's it's not the good as in like is it, it is a great movie. The good as in this is one of the more positive ones. This mm. is a you know they come and they're not here to conquer or you know enslave or enslave. They're they're here to to learn. You know, and it's just all about figuring out the the communication path to to learning more about each other. And, and it's that's, music. And it's music. And, if, and why not? And why not? John Williams puts his angles yeah into the score. <laughs> Excuse me. I think this is the best Ray Stratford movie to me. That I've seen, uh, Mr. Hall's opus is okay. What about Bob? It's okay. And what about Bob? It's all about Bob. It's pretty <laughs> That's sure. the best Bill Murray Richard movie. Jaws is my favorite. Movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, We're gonna need a bigger podcast. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. It is. It is a beautiful movie, man. Yeah, the great use of colors in that joint. It's. It's. It came out what the same year as Star Wars did. The it was uh, seventy. Yep, seventy-seven. Seventy-seven. Because yeah. that's what they bet on, which was going to do better. Star Wars or Close Encounters to the Third Kind. Uh, from a fun perspective, obviously Star Wars. From a artisanal perspective, it is easily Close Encounters to the Third Kind. Yeah. Uh, all right, then, German, it's on you. Okay, where to go here? Where to go? Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, once again, I'm going to put out another movie that I'll. Wouldn't say my childhood, but my somewhat later, my teens maybe kind of shaped me a little bit. Or it's kind of one of those, you know, one of those movies you first seen and it's like just blows your mind, changes your whole perspective of things. Um, you know, it's about um, it's about basically science gone wrong and um, the fly. And um, well, not 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 quite that one. Oh, okay, but not not gone that wrong. Great not, movie. Not, not, not that wrong. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, it's it's about cyberpunk and all this stuff. I'm going to Akira. You son of a bitch! Oh. You son of a bitch! Boom! That was my last pick. Boom! Very nice. Very, cool. Very Boom. nice. One of my first, you know, my first foreign in anime. And that was my first anime movie. Yes. It was the very oh, first one I ever watched. I was like, holy shit. I had it yeah, that's a what the right fuck. Here. The whole yes. like the whole third act is what the fuck. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck is going on here? It's like God it's, damn it. It's like an animated Cronenberg, basically. Yeah, like, really yes, is. yes, it is. Yes. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> well, oh my god. Go talk about it, you bastard. Good call. Bam, just, yeah, dude. You can still, you still hear people scream Tetsuo and all that. Yeah, yeah. I, Canada! I, I, Canada! Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's. I want that orange leather jacket yes. so bad. Mm. If it didn't cost about a two hundred bucks on with the pill on the back, that's yeah. right. Yeah, uh, that movie is amazing. Yes, like even Kanye West used the inspiration yeah. for that yeah. for, the, yeah. for the video. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, that's one. That I was like, I'm surprised Hollywood has not touched that yet. They've, they've been trying. Yeah. Oh they've God, trying. they've tried. Yeah. Somebody <laughs> did a. Uh, there was a. Uh, someone did it. I think it's a couple years ago. Uh, uh, concept test footage. For the the uh, bridge chase, yes, mm -hmm. the, I remember uh, that. Yeah, look, and I like fucking jumped off the page. Yeah. Like I'm like I'm like I'm literally staring at a live action adaptation of the anime of the manga. Like Tron like was, Legacy would convince you that it's definitely possible. Fuck to yeah, do this dude! Right. I yeah. absolutely agree. I think it, I think it would be a hundred percent possible. <sighs> Great pick, Jermont. Damn, you're, you're a dick. <laughs> <laughs> He's like a wise dick, though. I just got. I had. I had two of my Verhoeven's taken from me. Yeah. <laughs> I, had I did. I, like, yeah, I did. No I sucked the wind out of your sails. I'm sorry. <laughs> like half of my list got decimated. <laughs> Akira was on my list for sure. I fucking pulled that bitch All off right, just now. Fine. Fine. All right, then. Uh, Mr. Martin, what is your 
ninth pick. I'm going to go ahead and take the other Spielberg off the table that I assume everybody's talking about and go with E.T., the extraterrestrial. Uh-huh. That was, was kind of on my radar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I was debating between that and Close yeah. Encounters, and I went Close Encounters because I think that is the better movie. I, I would agree. E.T. is better it's, score. It's harder yeah, sci-fi it than, than E.T. I would yeah, yeah. Et, sure. et, I believe absolutely. Et is a much better score than Close Encounters. Oh, far, far. Oh, yeah. Good, yeah. good yeah. score. Yeah. Close Encounters is good, but damn, Et. Who can? If you've seen that movie once, you can fucking hum that shit. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's true. That's yeah, John, that's, that's, John and that's what Williams I was about. It's like the best, the most effective Even scores it, are always the ones. It's the, one the you only can thing the Atari Twenty Six Hundred game got right. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, yeah, we'll talk but we about won't it. talk about that. But uh, worth playing e. for the title screen. E.T. is the first movie I have legit memories of seeing in the theater. Yeah, um, and it's just when you're a with little guns? kid. No, yeah. not with guns. With gu- no, with well, guns. Uh, yeah, with guns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With with yeah. guns, they got replaced with the walkie talkies, and then the guns came back for the uh, the Blu-ray release. But um, but yeah, yeah it's just it, it leaves such an impact on you as like a boy. And seeing yeah. this sort of story play out because it's not really that E.T.'s an alien, it's that Elliot needs a friend. Uh and uh also kind of creeped me out that all the, the all the adults are treated as the hostile, invasive parts of the environment when they come up with the the hazmat suits on and everything. I was legitimately terrified as a kid. Yeah. Yeah. Um and when you're a kid watching that, you just want them to win that much more. Uh, Because you were terrified of people, not the alien. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, So, uh, just, you know, I have nothing but fond memories. And shout out to Reese's Pieces, man. They took a gamble on that shit. Oh, yeah. Creepiest thing. All right. So, creepiest thing I can say about E.T. is that. When E.T. first came out, there was a serial that was released alongside it. As I remember E.T.'s. I remember that. E.T.'s. E-T's. 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 They they had a sort of chocolatey peanut butter taste. Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. I didn't see the movie for years, and when it got re-released in theaters around the year two thousand and two for the for the twentieth, yeah. and that's when they had the the CG uh, walkie talkies. Yeah, I'm I'm uh, I'm watching it, and the first ET shows up, and I'm like, my God, I bet that guy tastes delicious. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like, I'm like, where the fuck did that come from? <laughs> you know? Wow. And it took me a while, but I was like. <laughs> I think I, he tastes like peanut butter. But you know, here's the thing. He probably does taste like peanut butter because it's all he's eaten the whole time. Yeah, yeah. I, literally, I literally just put two and two together on the E.T. cereal tasting like peanut butter. I yeah. literally just... Yep. That's that. creepy it's, it's as fuck. Thanks for that, guys. That's uh... <laughs> It would have been like if the C-3PO cereal tasted like WD-40. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, dude, that cereal was yummy. Oh, that was good. I no, bought was... that shit for the masks on the back. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. Thank the maker. All right, Brian, it is your final pick. Final sir. pick. Okay. Mm, uh, final round. Okay, I'm kind of waffling between two here, but I. Uh... Man, that Akira shit fucked me up. <laughs> That's great. I, I thought I had it. I thought I had it in the bag. I'm surprised it didn't go early. I was, I was, I, was, I had it in my back pocket. It was yeah. my ace in the hole. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I think I am going to go with the original Blade Runner. Yep, um, that was the one I kept yeah. skipping over. Yeah, yep. I, um, I actually kept skipping it as well. Just, just there's a few, there's a few like big ones that I've like. Kind and of it's it, it kind of goes back to kind of what you said about Last Starfighter. Um, that Blade Runner informed so much of what came after it from a visual standpoint. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that opening long pan across the city, which is with really, that one note Vangelis score. Yeah. The yeah. only, that's really the extent of the world building. But like, by the yeah. time you get there, you're like, I think I've seen enough of this place. Yeah. You know? yeah it I think I get it. There's fire police, pillars, there's Terrell shit. building. Yeah. We're good. Yeah. 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 Um, I, the I, giant I, neon signs. I love how unabashedly detective it is. It's just a detective oh, yeah. story, um, mm. set against this neo noir, you know, futuristic backdrop. I think, uh, Deckard is awesome. Uh, Harrison Ford's great in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sean Young is absolutely terrific, just as just mechanical as possible, but still human enough that you feel for her. More yeah. human than human. Um, now, do you prefer the uh, voice voiced over or not? No. Non voiced over. Non voiced over. In fact, the uh, the 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 final, the final cut, cut of the movie right? yeah. is is superior because the voiceover is gone. And it's a bit more streamlined. It just makes more sense, and the movie's pace is a lot better. I yes. think. I think that initial director's cut, which was the first version of the movie I saw, um, is 
very, very good, but I think the final cut really did a service to it. All right. I'm one of those crazy people that prefers the voiceover. Oh, you're crazy. You're <laughs> crazy. I, I like I, I, I like I like viewing the movie as a Sam Spade I, thing. Yeah, yeah, and that's kind I of get what the gumshoe. Like you I like this, it like that. Yeah. When you take the voiceover out of it, it, it literally a becomes a different movie. It's it, like yeah. a different film at that point. You yeah. know, yeah. I saw it. I saw it the original one way with the with the voiceover already in it. So to me, that's already. I that's saw it. Lived. I saw the first time I saw the one with the voiceover. I was sitting at my girlfriend's house on a Sunday afternoon, and it was just on TV, and literally the entire family was arguing behind me. <laughs> and so I'm like, let me just move closer to the TV, and I'll sit down and watch this. So it was just this cacophony behind me, and I was watching the movie, and I was, I got out of it, and I was like, yeah, that was okay. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> All right, Jermon, it okay. is time for your final pick, sir. Final pick. Hmm, what do I go with here? What do I go with? Um, Dude, you this, know is, what? this is the nail in the coffin yes. right here, man. Don't mess it up. Okay, I'm going to pick a movie that you know it's a more it's another more recent classic um, movie I absolutely love since I've watched it you know numerous times and everything um it's about I mean it's a movie it's a sci-fi movie that's about power and what that ultimately does to people um Chronicle uh, yeah uh, yes the There's only good Dane DeHaan movie that's, that's true that's fair <laughs> 100% that's, yes. true um 100% true the, I like Valerian and still shut up yeah, I, I've enjoyed <laughs> Valerian a bit yeah. The, you and the, nobody else. I would say the one the good Josh Trank Ma- movie. I would say the, oh, the only good Max Landis movie. Yeah. <laughs> That's fair. Had a lot going for it. God, I, dude, that guy's a dick. He really is. I mean, it, Look at his hair. You just look at his hair I'm, and you're like, you are a prick. Of course. <laughs> the hell I mean, out of here. Of course, um, of course obvious um, comparisons to, to Akira. There's, uh, yeah, it's the live action. Oh, for Akira. sure. Yeah. 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 So, I'm so, even oh, down to okay. him in the, in, the, in the gown and stuff. Like, yeah. It's like that suit you're going with there. Yeah, yeah. Michael B. Jordan's big... That's his big coming out Big coming out party. Yeah, yeah. really? Yeah. yeah. Yes. I to- oh, my God. I totally forgot about that. Yeah. Josh Trank. Oh, yes. that poor, poor bastard. <laughs> I mean... Is he really a poor, poor bastard or just a all. bastard, though? Come he on. He hit it out of the park that first time. He hit it out of the park, yeah. Yes. And, uh, things went downhill quickly. Yeah. I'm just going to go on a record as saying, fuck a Josh Trank, okay? It was the fuck origin of guy. a supervillain. <laughs> yeah, like, that's what it is, yeah. Trank bomb camped after that. One and done. He just... <laughs> and the analogies just keep <laughs> but I, it's yeah. like a stacking doll <laughs> blah nesting doll those Russians yeah. I mean that's probably one of the few found footage movies I can tolerate like Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. fair it's enough. Blum camp inside a trank inside a Verhoeven. <laughs> 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 All right. And in the end, it's Shyamalan the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> the what twist. a twist! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, it's time for my final pick. I really fucked up on this one. Um, I'm going to go ahead and. Uh, I really fucked it up this time. You know what? We haven't talked a whole lot of romance on this. On oh, this, I, on I this know draft. where you're going here. I kind of know where you're going here. We got to give some love to M- Michelle Gondry and Eternal Sunshine. Yeah, good pick. Of the spotless spotless mind. mind. That yes. was on my list. That's a good I, one. I actually thought you were going another direction, but I, I yeah, that's that's a good one too. Um, yeah, I, I should have taken something else, but I, yeah, I'm gonna go with Eternal Sunshine and Spotless Mind. It is uh, Jim Carrey's best film. It's I think it's one it might be Kate Winslet's best film. Um, Hell, Elijah Wood does his thing it's in there. Kirsten, Kirsten Dunst. Dunst. Yeah, yeah up Mark in there. Ruffalo. Uh, what's it's kind the, of a uh, panoply of the, yeah. the doctor's awesome. name? What's the doctor's name? Who was that guy? Oh, uh, uh, he was in Batman yeah, Begins. Yeah, he's, he's Carmine Falcone yeah, in yeah. Batman Begins. Oh, I think it's yeah, Tom yeah. something. Tom, uh, Tom Willing- Wilkinson? Tom, Tom Wilkinson. Tom Wilkinson. There you go. Yeah. Tom job. Wilkinson. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, it's, it's coming for you. Tess, you might. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it is a damn good movie. <laughs> What if you could erase memories? Like, would you do it? Would you go for it? Like, is it something? Is it a snap judgment? I think a lot of people would do it in snap judgment, and I they wouldn't be able to memory. come to regret it because they wouldn't know that they. They did. wouldn't yeah. be able to. Regret I'd it, erase yeah. the memory of Battlefield Earth. Yes, <laughs> I would do that. You know, I didn't see that until maybe a few years ago, and I think at the time I had um, I had gone through a breakup and. That man, that movie resonated. Man, it was like it, yeah, uh, it hits yeah, you deep, for man. Sure. It hits you deep. Um, yeah, I think it is an amazingly done movie. A horrible. Oh, I'm sorry, are we still talking about Eternal Sunshine? Because 
Yeah, he wasn't talking about Battlefield Earth. That was no. quite a segue. <laughs> yeah, I after a, I'd after like a to make sure the audience knows they are still talking about Eternal yeah. Sunshine and <laughs> not, not no, no. all of this shade has been thrown at Battlefield Earth. I will <laughs> never fuck I've never that. seen that. <laughs> You've never seen Battlefield never. Earth? Don't, don't, don't no, put that you know what? Watch it once. <laughs> I, I recommend nope. everybody nope. watch it once just nope. to know how not to do things. Nope. Not, not even a gunpoint. Not even a gunpoint. <laughs> <laughs> I'll right, take yeah. the bullet. Uh, <laughs> there is no fire on Planet Cyclo. <laughs> Uh, all right then. Uh, this is it's all on you, Pete. Oh, you are the damn. last pick of the Ooh, this is the pick. this is the fire right now. Yeah, like, come with it. Come with it. Like the last. <laughs> this is another one of those. See, I'm in the, I'm in the same boat as you. It's like, do I do I want to pick personally or do I want to win? Yeah, you got to go for that W. I know. There's still some big ones that have there's, not been picked. Oh, I know a lot of big ones. I know all sorts of moves. I know. That have been picked. We still got another podcast to do after this. <laughs> I, 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 I know. I'm sorry. Um, <sighs> Ghost in the Shell, the original. Yep, I thought anime. about it. I thought about it. Hmm. You got to uh, have an animated movie in there. That's good. I, 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 what? I it's assume it's the animated gotta, movie. You got to right? get an animated no, movie in there. Yeah. Well. Yeah, it was the... my my call right now was between two animated movies. I it's it's what's the one that had the biggest impact like you know just in terms of storytelling and which one had the biggest impact to me. I got to go with Ghost in the Shell. Um this just it's it also had that Ghost in the Shell for the simple fact that it contains one of my favorite lines in all of cinema. Over specialize and you breed in weakness. Ooh, I absolutely guy. love that idea that you if you can just you can be the best at fucking one thing when you suck at everything else are you really awesome <laughs> like and and the whole idea that that by the end of that movie the that very line is played out that now Kusanagi is no longer herself no longer herself or the puppet master she is now a new being yeah that is comprised of much like you know in in, in you know vision is mm-hmm. comprised of Ultron and Jarvis, but he's neither of those people. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, Kusanagi at the end of that movie is neither the puppet master nor the major. He is something new. Yeah. And and I I love that that integration. That um, the 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 uh, conflict for me was because I really 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 real bad wanted to pick uh, Transformers the movie. Ooh. Oh, oh okay. man! That that was, and I feel I really bad. That, but yeah. I feel really bad that I didn't. Uh, but. But Ghost in the Shell, it's if I'm way in the two, <laughs> Ghost in the Shell is technically the better film. So yeah, I've got to agreed. I've got to go yeah. with that. Agreed. I know? was afraid. I was af- I was thinking of that month the animated Transformers myself, but I was thinking that anybody even seeing that on knee jerk reaction was going to think Michael Bay. But the ew. Yeah, I mean. Oh I, no! I would have put the caveat fucking eighty yeah, six. I would have written it. I would have one hundred percent written that. I would have specified. Just like I will specify for you. Yeah. Ghost in the Shell animated. Not yes, please, yes, please do. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I you know I didn't have the same problem with the live action that everybody else. You know, a lot of the same problems that everybody else seemed to have. My problems with the live action is I don't I don't I, don't, I didn't think that it touched on the right themes. I, I had no just, problem with Starlet Johansson being the main character. I, I don't you know. I, that's, that's whatever. I just think it was a mediocre action film. Right. Yeah. I didn't think, but to me, that's everything that the live action movie was about is not what I think Ghost, Ghost in the Shell was about. about. Yeah. I thought, I thought Ghost in the Shell was about, it, it had nothing to do with humanity, had, had, had everything to do with personality. Yeah. And yeah. there wasn't any in the fucking live action movie, like none. No one had any. Yeah. Not even Bateau, who is the only one who actually had a personality in the movie. <laughs> that comes from bad direction and bad screenwriting. Yes, it does. <laughs> All right. Uh, a couple of honorable mentions I had on here that I didn't draft. Uh, when I drafted Close Encounters, I was this close to getting Interstellar Ooh. instead. Mm. I, th- I figured either that or Inception was going to go early. Interstellar yeah. didn't even make my list. It was number 16 on my list. Oh, wow. Uh, Annihilation didn't get on my list. Mm-hmm. I put that. Uh, I Gravity of the Martian couple other joints that didn't make my didn't make my cut um rogue one i was really thinking about putting on there as well mm-hmm. and contact sunshine attack the block Source sunshine, code. sunshine. Yeah. fuck yeah dude the yeah. sun's the villain you know what? i'm surprised <laughs> <laughs> get out see and it's, it's probably too deep a cut but i'm surprised nobody uh picked moon a moon a moon was on my list number 
I was I was thinking about it. But I was like, on that's my too, list. Moon was on that's number too obscure nineteen for, for folks. Like, Moon was gonna be my last pick, but I decided to go with Eternal Sunshine because I think we'll get more votes. Than yeah. Moon will. Okay. I now, was I was yeah. on the cusp of, of the fly. Yeah. I was oh yeah, the, I had the fly yeah, too. There was gonna be a Cronenberg. It was gonna yeah. be the fly. Yeah. That, uh, that dude's fucking. Weird. My 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 runners up were the, looking at E.T. I was waffling between that and Wally. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had Wally too. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> I was Wally's a great fucking on movie. See, but I figured I already had a. I had Iron Giant, so yeah. I'm good. And then the other, the final one, uh, it was between Blade Runner and Twelve Monkeys. Oh, I had Twelve, 12 Monkeys, Monkeys too. Is number forty four on my list. I got. Um, let's see, my alternates. I had ID Four, The Fly, uh, Demolition Man. Oh man! Oh, uh, I forgot Demolition Man. Oh, uh, we had d- do over. I just watched it, that it, round it, one. <laughs> two, two, two hours. Here we go. Yeah. Round one. We're fighting over Demolition Man. Oh that. fuck yeah! Dude. I had the Running Man on my uh, list too. Running Man. One I was thinking about. Uh, Flash Gordon. Yes. Galaxy Quest. Uh, yes. Predator. Nobody picked ah! Predator, which just surprised me. Yeah. Uh, Unbreakable. Um, what else was on here? Her. Her. I had her yeah. on my list. Yeah. <laughs> See, I didn't hear anybody mention Tron. Besides me, I was afraid I it, on I that it, one. Uh, on the back, yeah, of I, I, I didn't hear anybody 49. mention the black hole. <laughs> Ooh, that's no. A good one. Oh, uh, uh, Logan's right. Run, Westworld. We, we, we were just talking about Logan's Run earlier. <laughs> yeah, we yeah, I had we the Fifth Element on my list, but I also fifth I'm surprised nobody. Um, I was also bold enough to put a Clockwork Orange on my list uh, because that, okay. yeah, that mm. to me is. I was, that's great sci-fi, before, dude. Before I, I was debating before I picked Fury Road, I was gonna go with um, Road Warrior. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Road Warrior is fucking. Yeah, that's awesome. That's Fury true. Road is great, but the Road Warrior is my shit, dude. I was that even so good. I was even almost to the point where I was gonna add a uh, Weird Science in there. Yeah, that would have. Hey, that would have worked. Yeah, that would have That would have absolutely worked. All right, that does think- it for this bit of business, man. We'll be back with brackets uh, right here on Pop Rica. Y'all take it easy.